Do you remember where you were the last time Iowa State beat Iowa? It was so long ago, Reggie Roby was still punting for the Hawkeyes. A Bulldog named Herschel Walker was on his way to a Heisman Trophy. Miami's Hurricanes had yet to win their first national crown. And today's starting middle linebacker for Iowa State was only 12 years old. It's been nine years since Iowa State took a victory from the Iowa Hawkeyes, and nobody feels that pressure more than me. Since I'm from Ames and have lived in Ames almost all my life, it means an, a, a lot to me to bring back a win to Ames, not only for myself, but for all Cyclone fans. If it were to happen, today may be as good a time as any since Iowa has failed to live up to its preseason billing. Could this be the day? As Iowans choose up sides, it's the Cyclones and the Hawkeyes doing battle for the 40th time. More than 70,000 on hand for this big interstate rivalry as the Iowa Hawkeyes play host to the Cyclones of Iowa State. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. Welcome to Iowa City for a happening. It's not just a football game. This rivalry dates back to the turn of the century. And now here in 1992, the Iowa Hawkeyes off to a slow start, victims of their own schedule after losing to North Carolina State and number one ranked Miami. Iowa State, the last time they were able to win this game was way back in 1982. It's a nine-game winning streak for the Hawkeyes. The Cyclones hope that they can finally turn the trick ten years later. And Gary Danielson, Jim Walden, the Cyclones head coach, thinks maybe he's got the team to do it today. Well, I really believe he does think so, but he has to get over a couple of points. First of all, there's frustration. Losing nine times a row to anyone is tough, let alone your arch rival. And second, self-image. The guys have to believe they can win. We talked to Coach Walden on how he would approach the game. Well, when they go out on that field, what I want them to do is measure themselves against this Iowa team. Not any in the, in the past and not any ghost or any tradition. Just play your best against this team and let's just see how it works out. Because I think I've got a pretty good football team and this is a good team to find out just how good we are. He has a pretty good football team and he has a little new image this year. They're going to feature the triple option. They've got a quarterback, Bob Utter, who has some experience running the option, but it's a little unique. It's really three plays in one and three weapons in one. The first option of the triple option is give it to the fullback. Iowa must stop the fullback. Ulrich last week gained 120 yards, option number one. Number two is the quarterback's going to take it up. If that defensive end or linebacker doesn't stop him, he's going to take it up for the second option. But the real object of the play is to get it outside to those speedy halfbacks and get around the quarterback corner. Option number three for the Cyclones, it's three options in one. And today, we're going to see a lot of that, Brad. And if they, Iowa doesn't stop it, we'll see it all day. Jim Walden has said that a win over Iowa would mean more for his program than any other team in the country. Let's get down to the third member of our broadcast crew. She's got the perfect name for this stadium. And these fans, Hawks is a good name, Charlene. Down here on the uh, Hawkeye sideline, it sure is, but with Iowa State, I'm on a first-name basis. At the beginning of the season, Coach Weldon told his team that the theme for this year is to have fun. And he added with his new offense, even if you're not having a good day, you can still have fun. Well, even so, the best way to have fun is to win. And there are 19 seniors on this Iowa State 2 deep roster who are taking their last shot at Iowa. And to me, this morning, they look more ready for war than for having fun. Their idea of a good time is taking home this Cy Hawk traveling trophy, which hasn't taken a trip in 10 years. If Iowa State wins today, this trophy will be the life of the party. Brad? And they would party back in Ames if they could bring that trophy home. Before we kick it off, let's go back to our man in the studio, Tim Brando. Tim? All right, we're serving up some great college football today, and we welcome you to our college football studio, where we'll keep you posted with all of the doings around college football on this second full Saturday afternoon of the campaign. We've got a great menu for you here on ESPN. Don't forget the residents in College Football School Board immediately following this game at 3.30. The Canadian Open, tremendous leaderboard there. Greg Norman just four shots behind Bruce Litsky. Sports Center will come a little later in the day at 6.30 with all the latest news from Flushing Meadow in the U.S. Open. The Residence Inn College School Board at 7 o'clock. Most comprehensive show in college football. And then it's Florida State and Clemson from Death Valley. 
Speaking of games already underway at Bird Stadium, Anthony Barber takes the pitch for the Wolfpack, and Dick Sheridan's club has the lead over the Terrapins of Maryland. Seven to nothing the score early in that one. West Virginia take it on pit. Jake Kelchner, the Notre Dame transfer, is in this ball game. They're scoreless, though, in the first quarter. Virginia Tech has a three-nothing lead. Ryan Williams with a 34-yard field goal. The Pirates have scored at least 20 points in 17 straight games. Yet another game featuring an outstanding quarterback, a guy with a tremendous future that you'll hear Gary Danielson talking about with Brad Nessler. His name is Hartley. The game is next. Stay with us. Diamond Crystal knows there's nothing like pure, clear water. That's why Diamond Crystal makes some of the most advanced water softener salts you can buy. Make your water special with Diamond Crystal. All-Pro quarterback Dan Marino. When the game is over and the pain starts, I want two things for my pain-relieving rub. Fast relief and no odor. So I use Sports Cream, a strong pain-relieving rub that doesn't make me smell like a medicine chest. I just massage in Sports Cream for fast, odor-free relief, cream or lotion, Sports Cream sure gets my vote for fast relief and no odor. From Iowa City, Iowa, the Cyclones and the Hawkeyes set to have at it here at Kinnick Stadium. The Cyclones have won the toss. They'll get the football first, and that means Todd Romano will tee it up for Iowa. Back deep, Jim Knott on your right, James Brooks on your left. The dual tandem for the Cyclones, who haven't won in this series since 1982, and they're going to have to wait another second before the kick. There is some wind. We've got about 77 degrees and sunshine, but the wind could be a factor a little bit today, Gary. Well, it really was. I was down on the field before the game, and you could see about a 10-yard difference throwing against the wind and with the wind. They say we may have gusts at times to 20 miles per hour as you take a look at the flags flying over Kinnick Stadium. That gives you an idea. But other than that, an absolutely brilliant September day here in the Midwest. There's our game conditions. Now Romano's got it teed up. And we're underway. The kick to Brooks, five yards deep. He can't handle it. And Iowa State will open from its own 20-yard line. With the wind, an excellent kick. I think Iowa got a personal foul. Not the way they wanted to start the ball game. Kind of was silly. It was really well after the uh, whistle. John Laurie, our referee, gives you the sign. It'll be a first down, and it'll give Iowa State much better field position, obviously. As we take a look at our Energizer starting lineups, the offensive set for the Cyclones of Iowa State. Bob Utter, who was brilliant two years ago in his first collegiate start, leads a group with Williams, Knott, and Ulrich. Chris Spencer, the leading receiver for Iowa State the last two years, joins Dan Dostal, the tight end. Scart beat on the left side at left tackle. Didn't play in this game due to an injury a year ago. He joins Roberts, Armbrust, Booth, and McLish as the Cyclones work from their own 35-yard line. Again, it's the triple option. And keep your eye on the ball all day long. Hunter rolls and wants to throw. Now he'll keep it. And he's got a lot of room in front. A first down and then some. A pickup of 15 yards before Utter is run out of bounds. Doug Book knocked him out, but the quarterback showing his versatility already for Iowa State. Defensively for the Hawkeyes. Up front, Mike Wells, one of the leaders of an experienced group with Blue, Nelson, Vilema, and John Hartley. Teddy Joe Faley, the inside linebacker with Mike Daly. And in the secondary, Jason Olenzak, the leading tackler with Book, Plates, and Carlos James. So immediately, the Cyclones have worked their way into Hawkeye territory. And straight up the middle and all the way to the 40-yard line, Sundiata Patterson, the fullback. Mike Daly in on the tackle. Brad, it's really the tempo-setting play for a triple offense. They have to run the ball inside to really be able to run the ball outside. 
the Hawkeyes are going to have to shut it down. Last week against Ohio U, that was the feature play. The fullback up the middle. Ulrich, as we talked about, ran for 120 yards. Second down and two as Patterson got eight at the 40-yard line. The Iowa State Cyclones on their opening drive and marching quickly to the Hawkeye 40. Hutter looks like he changed the play up at the line. And on the option, he keeps and goes down under a heap as Jeff Nelson led the charge. The 6'5 senior out of Stillwater, Michigan, with the first big defensive play of the afternoon for the Hawkeyes defense. The option breaks down on this play because the right tackle is not able to get his block on Nelson. See about the middle of your screen, right tackle is going to try to close, but Nelson's on an outside rush, and it... Utter is not able to get to the end man on the line of scrimmage for the option. That means they have to run the ball inside still. So with the loss backed up to the 43-yard line, where it's third down and five. Bob Utter threw only 10 passes in the season opening win over Ohio University last week. And a fumble in the secondary. It's going to be Iowa football. And it's going to be Jeff Nelson on top of that ball. Patterson coughed it up. Nelson with a recovery, and Gary, this is what really killed Iowa State early a, a week ago, yet they were able to overcome it and win, and they start off with a turnover. Well, there's risk and rewards in running option football, but one of the things you have to be careful is not to fumble the ball on the first phase of the, uh, phase of the option. When you're handing the ball off to the fullback, that's the safest portion of the option, and that's a big mistake for uh, Iowa State early in the game. Well, the first break comes with 13.22 to go first quarter. We'll set the Iowa offense in a moment. On a toss sweep, and not much there for Marvin Lampkin. Got out, back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it, as Goodwin came in to make the tackle. Offensively for Iowa, Lou Montgomery, one of the leaders in there at the fullback spot with Lampkin and Hartley at the controls. Dana Hughes, all Big Ten receiver, leads the wide receiver core, and Allen Cross the tight end. Mike Devlin, one of 12 semifinalists for the Lombardi Trophy with an experienced wall up front, fifth-year senior group along the front for Iowa offensively. And a little option of their own for the Hawkeyes, and Hartley gets out near the 43-yard line. Mark Dubrava came up to make the tackle. First time we've seen the option out of the Hawkeyes this year. And it's really not a surprise. I talked to quarterback coach Don Patterson before the game, and I was asking him, when are you going to see the option? When are we going to see the option from Hartley? We saw it from Rodgers, and you said he's a better runner. Iowa State defensively. Watkins led them in sacks a year ago with Miller, Peterson, and Dunleavy. Dan Milner leads the linebacking core, and Mark Dubrava in the secondary is a two-time All-Big 8 performer, joining Walker, Bugs, and Fulton. Third down and three, Iowa. It's opening drive after recovering the fumble. Hartley to throw. Hughes is open. If he breaks that tackle, he could go a long way. Getting him out of bounds was Sean Walker, but Danon Hughes of the Hawkeyes picks up 11 and a first down. But Scott Davis is going to get another personal foul, a 15-yarder after the whistle blew, blew again. Hawkeyes taking a few cheap shots late behind the whistle. This was 20 yards from the play, too. Here's the call. Dead ball. Personal foul. On the offense, first and 25. The first down stands. It was a post-play penalty. But instead of having a first down near the 45-yard line of Iowa State, they're going to march it back into Iowa territory. Here's another look. One of the things we talked about with the coaches before the game is how do they stop Dane and Hughes? They're going to play off and man coverage, and they're going to have a tough time stopping this pass. They're about 80% on that quick out on this short pass to Hughes, and they have to give them plenty of room. Boy, those kind of penalties just kill you, though. All the way back, the Hawkeyes go to their own 39-yard line, where it's first and 25. So they're not much further out of their own territory than they were after the fumble recovery by Jeff Nelson. He got it at the 36. Now they're at the 39-yard line. They do have a first down and 25 to go. Angela and Hughes, the wide receivers. Montgomery in motion, and Lampkin takes it across the 45. He's stacked up there by the Cyclone defense. And I mean, the Cyclones blew in there defensively. Goodwin and Milner led the charge from their linebacking core. 
Well, Malcolm Goodwin is at their fastest linebacker. He's in the middle of the field, and they want him to make the most tackles. That defensive line is going to try to free him up, and he's best sideline to sideline, running down people and making tackles. 6-2 senior out of Ames, Iowa. And as you heard in our open, he would, more than anyone on this team maybe, like to take an upset back to Ames. Second and 17 at the 47. Lampkin cuts back, got across midfield to the 49 where he's tripped up, and it will still bring up third down, about 13 to go. Hayden Fry, who calls the offensive plays for Iowa, would like to get the Iowa offense back in sync. They have been throwing a lot the last two weeks. He'd like to be 50-50. They're about 60-40 pass run, and he really would like to gear up that running game going into a couple big games, Colorado and Michigan coming up. Going to have to use that passing game here, you would expect. Antela to the bottom of your screen. Hughes, the flanker, to the top on a third and 13 for the Hawkeyes. And Hartley set to throw. Goes for Hughes, wide open. Broke a tackle, and he's got it at the 21-yard line for Iowa. 28-yard pass play. Brad, this is basic defense for the Cyclones, and there was really a breakdown by the corner right up here. Sean Walker, he's supposed to drop in this zone and go as deep as he can and keep that first down in front of him. Watch how he jumps on the tight end cross in the flat, and that leaves the man Hughes right behind him for the big play. That's really basic defense, and a corner should know better not to let that pass get over his head in that situation. That's Hughes' second catch already today, his 16th of the year. And he's in motion on first down at the Cyclone 21, and Hartley goes to him again. Dana Hughes for the Hawkeyes to the 14-yard line of Iowa State. Andrew Bugs in on the tackle. He is some kind of weapon. When you look at him on the field, and I talked to him before the game, he is much bigger than you realize, too. He is just solid muscle, 202. He's not a sprinter, but the coach told us the scouts timed him in a sub-4640, so that's good enough to play. Believe me, he is so smooth. It just snatches that ball like a baseball player. I guess he does play baseball. He does play baseball. <laughs> Two-sports star. We'll talk about that as we go. He's got three catches for 47 yards already. And has set up the Hawkeyes with a second and two. Here's the option again by Hartley. Got around one man and got to the 10. I think he got the first down. Mark DeBrava from the secondary made the stop. But Jim Hartley has picked up the first down, a first and goal for Iowa at the Iowa State nine-yard line. Hartley has been getting a little bit of the Boo Birds from the kids uh, last week against Miami. But, you know, he had a great football game. He threw for more yards than Saka or Weldon did or Klingler did against that Miami team a week ago. So you have to understand the competition sometimes. Iowa on the season, there's what they've done in the red zone of their opposition. And they've got it first and goal at the Iowa State 9. Jasper and Hughes, the wide receivers. And it's a draw play to Lampkin with a blocker in front. Montgomery, a great block, and Lampkin score. <laughs> Marvin Lampkin, the senior out of East St. Louis. A nine-yard touchdown, and that's the way you draw up a draw play on the blackboard. Andy Kreider in for the point after. And the Iowa Hawkeyes take advantage of their fumble recovery. Their opening drive nets them seven. As we talk, the Hawkeyes put so much pressure on where Dane and Hughes is that the draw just fits in. Nice line blocking by the Hawkeyes, and Montgomery makes a, Lampkin makes a nice cutback into the end zone. Gee, honey, great bacon. <laughs> it's not bacon. Not bacon. ESPN's presentation of Big Ten football is brought to you by Buick and your local Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. And by Yokohama Tires, advanced technology on wheels. Great start.
Clark for the Hawkeyes who score their opening drive. A nine-yard touchdown run by that man, Marvin Lampkin. Capped off a 64-yard drive in nine plays, 423 of the elapsed time. Yeah, plus 15 extra on that penalty, too. Right. So attack 15 more yards on it. Romano. He's got it teed up. Back deep, you saw Brooks and not. And the Hawkeyes kick away to the Cyclones with a 7-0 lead. Brooks stumbles two yards deep. He won't bring it out again. Penalty marker down. Second time we've had a marker down on a kickoff. Legal block, which is a little bit rare when your return right. man doesn't come out of the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> On the return. First down. In fact, I don't know that I've ever seen that. Jim Walden's wondering that himself on the sideline. In his sixth year as the head man of the Cyclones. Let's go to Tim Brando in the studios, Tim. Not a good start for Alex Van Pelt at Pitt Stadium today. Already trailing six to nothing. He's picked off here by Kwame Smith. He takes it 70 yards for the score. Now, West Virginia had missed their first extra point. They went for two, got it. They lead by two touchdowns, 14 to nothing over Paul Hackett's team. Here at 7 0, Hawkeyes leading the Cyclones. 8.59 to go, first quarter, and a first and 10 at the 10 for Iowa State, following the penalty on the kickoff. And again, it's the fullback, Patterson. Very short gain, if any. Maybe got a yard. Well, the Iowa defensive line, this time it was 97. Jason Dumont is really beating the state offensive line to the punch. Dumont just beat his man across the line of scrimmage, and no play is going to work when you don't block those interior free, free front men for the Iowa Hawkeyes. A pickup of one for Patterson. Second down and nine. The Cyclones at their own 11-yard line. The crowd already getting into it for the Iowa defense. This time, out across the 16 goes Sherman Williams. In on the tackle. Jason Olenzak, the six-foot junior, who leads the club in tackles. Well, it's not unusual for a free safety to make tackles in option football. But the trouble the, the Cyclones are having right now is trying to get the ball to the option man. They can't get around the two defensive tackles for Iowa right now. Your triple option becomes a double option or no option at that point. <laughs> Third down at three. Iowa State 60, uh, 46 percent, I should say, a week ago on the third down conversions and utter to throw and lost one out intended for Brooks incomplete. Coverage there by Carlos James on the corner, and Iowa State will have to kick it away. Jim Walden told us yesterday the thing he wanted to avoid most in this football game was an early turnover or a trick play touchdown. And that's exactly what has happened to him. That early turnover has, again, just kind of pushed that self-image of the Cyclone players down just a bit. John Schnorr will kick away. And Harold Jasper back deep for the Hawkeyes in punt return formation. If he gets any kind of return, he'll be in Cyclone territory. Schnorr backed up to his own goal line. And the left footer booms one out to Jasper, who will take it at the 39. And go down at the 36. Nice coverage by the Iowa State special teams. 45-yard punt, minus two on the return. Seven minutes, 30 seconds remaining first quarter. The Iowa Hawkeyes lead Iowa State by a touchdown. you can handle, we can handle. Yokohama High Performance Tires. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Charlene Hawks in Iowa City at Kinnick Stadium where the hometown Hawkeyes lead the Cyclones by a touchdown and have it for the second time offensively. Iowa will work from its own 37-yard line. This is about the same spot on the field they started their touchdown drive on their opening possession. Jim Hartley at the controls. Jasper and Hughes as wide receivers. Play action. 
possession. And wide open is the tight end across the middle. Penalty markers down as Matt Whitaker picks up 14. Let's go to Tim Brando in our studios, Tim. Brad, here's one Gary Danielson will like from the fun and gun at Florida. Fourth and goal from the one, Shane Matthews with a play action fake. Kentucky defenses it well, and look at Monty Duncan get up and grab it. Gators lead at Florida Field 7 to nothing over the Big Blue. Penalty on the last play. A holding call goes against Iowa. Holding. Offense. Ten yards. Spot foul. Repeat. First down. Again, instead of being in Iowa State territory with a first down, they're all the way back to their own 23 now, Gary. Yeah, first and, and again, it was from the point of a foul. And it was Lou Montgomery on the on the uh, roll action who was the guy who held on that play. But uh, Matt Whitaker was wide open. I'd say he was 20 yards open on that play. Iowa State really has to get together. Here's another first and 23 situation for Hartley. Plenty of time to throw. Now buying time and down he goes. And you can give that to the secondary. It has to be a coverage sack there back to the 15 because initially he had all kinds of time and ran out of it when Dunleavy, the 6'4 senior out of Cedar Rapids just up the road, put him down. Absolutely, Brad. It was a coverage sack, and it was a good job by the state secondary that time. They played off the tight end. You're going to see it. It was Kevin Fulton, number 36, is going to drop back in the zone. He's trying to get the ball to, to cross, but he drops back in the zone. There's no one to throw to, and he has to take the sack. Iowa doesn't give up many sacks, but now they find themselves second down and 31 for the Hawkeyes. Used in motion from the 16. The draw play inside to Ryan Terry. And Terry broke a tackle, got across the 30 and all the way to the 32-yard line. That is a tough run. 16-yard pickup for Terry. Jeff Cole finally brought him down. Ryan Terry is beginning to push Marvin Lampkin a little bit for this spot. The sophomore transfer who walked on here at Iowa from Steubenville, Ohio, is starting to show that he caught seven balls against Miami this week. And if he can run the ball like that, he's going to be quite, a, quite an addition to the Hawkeyes. That was his first action. There's what he did on the ground last week. A transfer from Tennessee State, and he's got some speed. And he showed some of, the, some of that speed there. It's still third down and 15, though, for the Hawkeyes at their own 32-yard line. On third and long, Hartley pumps once and almost went down again. Finally throws back across field to Hughes. All the way to the 43-yard line. 25 yards and a first down. Wow. Hard to believe this guy's getting booed a little bit. Jim Walden would take him. Anytime he scrambles, he's going to look for that man, Dane and Hughes also. Hartley, 25 yards on this pass. Now watch, he's going to look around. His first guy's covered. His second guy's covered. Now he's in a little bit of trouble. But he's a strong quarterback. Maybe the strongest quarterback they've ever had here at Iowa and a good runner. And now look for number three. Throw him across the field, and there he is. Get the ball to him all day, and you won't have problems. At the 43-yard line of Iowa State, the toss to Terry. And Terry again with a big gain. Lost the ball at the end of the play, and Iowa State, I think, has come out of the pack with it. Andrew Bugs ripped it loose. And Kevin Fulton has come up with a football. There goes a big gainer, and it goes the other way. Iowa State picks up a fumble. There's no doubt that he just stripped that ball from him. I think it was Fulton who just took it out of his hand. A beautiful run by Terry. Let's look at the tail end of this play. He's already gained about 15 yards. 36 is Fulton. There's Bugs. They both kind of double team, and it pops out, and he catches it in midair, does Fulton, and that is a huge play for State. Bugs got a piece of him from behind, as we talked about last week. So many tacklers now will try to strip that football and between the two of them they got it loose and Iowa State's got it back offensively here's an inside handoff not finds a hole and he's got a first down for Iowa State before Teddy Joe Faley can put the stop on him but a pickup of 13 for Jim Knott the sophomore out of Crescent Iowa and Carlos James down on the play 
that play again I, I'm not exactly sure what happened there Brad that was a good 30 yards away from the play also I know this is an interstate rivalry and everybody's fired up to play football but I, I really didn't see exactly what happened to him Hayden Fry out over his fallen cornerback Carlos James a 5'11 senior from Park Forest Iowa what usually happens in that situation is you just relax just a bit as you see the man tackled and one of those wide receivers comes down and gives you a shot. Carlos testing everything out and he'll come off. And he was really tested last week, of course, against the high-powered passing game of Miami. And he says, hey, if we can hang with the Hurricanes like we did last week, we won't see a passing game like that again. And he's right about that. Tom Knight, a true freshman, will come in and take his spot on that right corner. Gives you an idea when you say you hang with the Hurricanes. They gave up 433 yards right. passing the ball. Just how good that football team is. The Cyclones with their own 39 yard line. Again, this drive started with a fumble recovery by their defense. Utter try to go on the slant to Chris Spencer, and Spencer's hammered by Scott Plate, a junior out of Brooklyn, Michigan. That time, Utter read the blitz from Iowa, checked to a quick slant, but played, played the ball perfectly. You know, one of the great advantages of facing a team early in the year like Miami is after that, everybody seems about normal. Yep. You, you know, you're, you're not shocked by anyone <laughs> after that. Carlos James, by the way, back in at the left cornerback position for the Hawkeyes. Cyclones, second and 10. Utter's 0 for 2 so far. Flags down. I think we're going to have a holding call on Iowa State as Utter scrambles out to the 45-yard line. Tyrone Boudreaux ran him out of bounds, but I'm almost positive that flag down in the backfield is going to indicate a holding call against the Cyclones. Soon to of Patterson, number 39, the fullback, has a tough block on that play. I believe he was the man who held as Utter tried to get outside. Holding on Iowa State to call. Holding. Offense. Spot foul. Ten yard penalty. Repeat set. Second down. And that spot foul is a killer, too, because it goes from where he was caught with the infraction and backs up Iowa State to its own 23 yard line. It's a 16 yard penalty. Jim Walton, who feels that this team has a better chance against the Hawkeyes than in at least a couple of years. Last year, they lost 29 to 10 in this matchup. Utter slips and goes down. Sack back at the 19-yard line. Mike Wells, a big junior out of Arnold, Missouri. Yeah, big junior and, and as strong as any football player on this football team. Just a hard worker, great technique. You know, and they, that's the one thing I felt Iowa did well against Miami is they put decent pressure on Toretta, and that is going to help them as the season wears along. They, they realize that, you know, with all-out effort, they can get in there and put pressure on the passers. Back to the 19-yard line. The Cyclones going the wrong way. Iowa State third and 30. Shovel pass to Patterson. Let's see if he can get in the secondary. Iowa runs him down at the 32-yard line. Teddy Joe Faley, the linebacker, the first to meet him. He got 13 yards, but another penalty marker down. And let's see what this flag's about. A holding call against the defense. Let's go to Tim Brand on our studios, Tim. Brad, Craig James said earlier today it would be the day for the underdogs. Watch now as it goes from bad to worse for Pitt. West Virginia quarterback Jake Kelchner will find John Kappa. He's at the one and he fumbles the football. It's picked up by Ed Hill for a touchdown. Mountaineers lead it 20 to nothing. A six-point underdog coming into this game at Pitt Stadium. 7 nothing here. The Hawkeyes favored in this game with the lead with 3.59 to go first quarter. And we've had a good number of penalties, some on some cheap shots and some on lack of concentration by both teams. And they're still talking this one over. 
Kind of interesting where that flag came down right next to Jim Walden. You wonder if he wasn't in the referee's <laughs> ear right there. I think the holding was called on the wide receiver as he was trying to release. John Lurie's the head referee of a Big Eight crew here in Big Ten country. Still giving the options to Chris Spencer and Bob Utter. And John Lurie's going to straighten it out for us here in just a minute. It is 7-0 if you just joined us. Iowa went 64 yards the first time they had the ball, and Marvin Lampkin scooted in from nine yards out on the draw play, and that's our only score thus far. Both teams have fumbled once. We've had six penalties, and we've had some personal fouls go in both directions in a heated rivalry. By the defense, the line of scrimmage, 10 yards, spot, repeat third down. So they take the 10 yards in the penalty instead of the 13-yard pickup because they want to pick up the extra down. While they're straightening this out, we'll tell you what's coming up after our game today. The residents in college scoreboard gets things going tonight at 7 o'clock. And oh, what a game this one ought to be. 7.30 tonight from Death Valley. First night game at Clemson in 36 years of the 15th-ranked Tigers. Host Bobby Bodden and his fifth-ranked Florida State Seminoles. That should be something else that's coming up tonight here on ESPN. They will eventually get this penalty straightened out, I promise you. I think Jim Walden here is a little confused as to why this isn't a, isn't a first down. It, it is not like the pro game. It's just a 10-yard penalty from the point of the foul, from the line of scrimmage. One more time here. The penalty situation so far, and what we will have when all the smoke clears, I think, is third down and 20. Jim Walden says, okay, let's play. I think he said that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the tough thing for Iowa State right now is they have not been able to establish that inside run on the option game. And if they can't do it, they won't be successful running option football. And, you know, that's just man against man when you get right down to it. The, the Hawkeyes' front three are just out-toughing that offensive line for the state right now. Iowa State at its own 29 with a third and 20. Two wide receivers, Spencer and Brooks. And the handoff inside to Patterson. Nets the Cyclones 11 yards out to the 40, but still a punting situation with fourth down and nine upcoming. Olin Zach from his strong safety spot in another tackle, and Schnorr will have to kick it away. Schnorr's first punt went 43 yards, and great coverage by the Iowa State special teams dropped Jasper for a two-yard loss and Harold's back there again nor another good kick and Jasper again will back pedal to the 12 and has an opening straight up the middle Jasper Brought down by Schnorr, or he may have had a touchdown. Got it all the way out to the 39-yard line. A 27-yard punt return by Harold Jasper. And Iowa will go to work offensively at its own 39-yard line. When we come back, the Hawkeyes lead by... That is... In your face. In your face. I'm Jim Kelly in Oakville, Ontario. Can Bruce Litsky make it a three-peat in this Canadian Open Championship? Greg Norman and Nick Price are only three off the lead, and the Masters champion Freddie Couples trails by four. Find out. We'll see you at 4 Eastern. Injured on the last punt coverage team, Jay Jordan, a sophomore out of Parkersburg, Iowa, down and still down. With 2.40 left first quarter, let's go back to Tim Brando. Tim. Shane Matthews making up for lost ground on the Heisman. He's been derailed only by his schedule out while Marshall Falk has been rolling up the yards. Look at this 25-yard strike against Kentucky. This one to Harrison Houston. The Gators have a 14-0 lead at home. Kentucky played them tough last year at Commonwealth Stadium. Guys only lost by nine. All right, Tim, thanks. 2.40 remaining first quarter, and we're still concerned about... The injury to 
Iowa State's backup fullback. And while we've got a moment, let's go to Charlene Hawk. Charlene? Brad, we'll check on that injury later. Right now, we've got Chuck Hartley down on the sidelines, a two-time All-Big Ten quarterback here at Iowa. And uh, a, a big member, he and his family are a big part of the Iowa football tradition and Big Ten football. Your brother Andy played linebacker at Wisconsin. You've got John and Jim out there on the field today. Earlier, you saw Jim uh, staying cool under pressure. Also, you saw him sacked. What goes through your mind when you watch your brothers? <laughs> Kind of reminds me of our old pickup games in the backyard way back when. But uh, Jim's quite a scrambler. He's a good runner besides being a good pastor. And I think he'll be all right this year. I first met you back at the 1987 Holiday Bowl that ESPN covered. Uh, bring us up to date on your life since you left Iowa the following year. I spent a year with the Oilers. And after that, got uh, married to my wife, Elizabeth. And uh, we've been married a year and a half, expecting our first child in October. And I'm working for a tremendous company in Baxter Healthcare right now. Right, now, do you know if that's a football player you're expecting yet? <laughs> Maybe another Hawkeye for Coach Fry a couple of years from now. Maybe. Who see? We'll see. All right. Well, it's good to see you again. Take care. Good luck. Brad? All right. We talked to Hayden Fry about the fact that he has had three of the four football playing heart leaves. And we said, Coach, are they are they all out of heart leaves? And he says, yeah, but I've been trying to talk their parents into giving it another go. <laughs> Well, they are, are, are great people, great in the classroom. And, uh, you know, I'm really impressed with uh, both John and, and Jim, how they're playing. You know, the quarterback, uh, that's John right there, number 42, the sophomore linebacker. And, uh, you know, he is all over the football field. Maybe they're, maybe they're future leader. We, we talked to Hayden now what this team is really missing. He pointed out Derby and Leroy Smith missing, and he's looking for that man to provide the leadership on defense. Well, they have brought out a stretcher for Jay Jordan, the sophomore who was shaken up on punt coverage for Iowa State. Usually in this situation, when you have that many people trying to immobilize, it, it's a fracture of some point, and they're not trying to, and I don't want to pretend like I'm a doctor, but I've been through 70 surgeries. I think you get, the, you get a feel for it after a while. They just don't want it to move and cause any further damage. I should say they've got the cart out there. That vehicle is about 10 years old in the game of football and has replaced the stretcher in many instances. And again, it's the left leg. And we'll get a report. To Charlene will try to update us. But Gary's probably got a pretty good prognosis there. We'll check for you. And the clock stop. 2.40 remaining first quarter. Iowa will have it offensively when play is resumed as they help Jay Jordan onto the cart. And you know that he's got family either at the stadium or looking on being a, an Iowa native out of Parkersburg. So as soon as we can get any word, we will let you know. 7-0 Iowa here. Elsewhere, you take a look at some scores with NC State and an ACC game out in front of Maryland. see if we might be able to see exactly what happened on this punt return. I think on the top of your screen right there, you're going to see a, a shot. I think it was from blue number 95 as he plants his foot right on the 20-yard line right there. You know, whether you're on turf or grass, when you plant that foot and you get hit from the top like that, you, all your torque goes into your leg. And I wouldn't be surprised if you got a fracture there. It just doesn't go that way, or it's not supposed to. As we'll get another angle here. You can see number 95 is going to be coming into your screen just outside of your just outside of the shot to the right side is where the, the big injury nicely blocked play for Jasper to get up there and make positive yards and uh, you know two good long punts and Jasper turned one of them around on him while we await the resumption of play here in Iowa City let's go back to Tim Brando in our studios Tim all right take a look at this guys East Carolina taking on Virginia Tech Michael Jacobs a punter and pass quarterback finds his man Cedric Van Buren. So on a day that we have Bobby Bowden, the king of the punt Ruski, we have some chicanery from East Carolina, Steve Logan. 7-3 ball game there. Pirates still with a few tricks up their sleeve without Bill Lewis, with a new head coach. And there goes Jay Jordan. 
wouldn't be surprised for the Hawkeyes and, and Hayden Fry, who's known for this, to spring a little bit of a surprise play on Iowa State two years ago. And, uh, Dayton Hughes caught a big play to kind of put a knife in their back, and that's one of the things that uh, defensive coordinator Robin Ross was particularly aware of. He didn't want the trick play for seven points. Dayton Hughes part of a trick play last week that probably would have worked against Miami had his receiver not broken pattern a little bit on him. Iowa leading 7-0. The Hawkeyes have it at their own 39-yard line. <laughs> LJ's got a smile on his face. That's maybe a good sign. Lampkin the tailback in the Iowa eye formation. Play fake. Hartley throws and wide open. Lou Montgomery, you hear the chance of Lou go up as he rumbles into Iowa State territory at the 36-yard line. Andrew Bugs knocked him up, but not before he got 25 yards. It's the mental mistakes right now that is really hurting the Cyclone defense. I mean, this is a very simple play. Fake to the tailback, and the fullback's just going out into the flat. State was in man coverage, and nobody follows the fullback. And that's maybe the third or fourth mental mistake they've made on very simple plays. And if they're going to stand up tall in this football game, they they have to eliminate that. Charlene's got an update on Jay Jordan. Charlene? Brad, I just spoke with Dr. Philippi, and he informed me that there is possible ligament damage to the anterior cruciate ligament and the medial collateral ligament for Jay Jordan. They are sending him to x-rays right now to rule out uh, the possible fracture of the tibia uh, because he has a lot of tenderness right there. But uh, we will keep you updated as soon as we know more. All right, thank you. Marvin Lampkin got it down to the... 30-yard line for Iowa, where Marcus Allen was in on the stop from his linebacking position. And a second down and three coming up for the Hawkeyes. Harold Jasper and Jeff Antela running in the plays from the sideline so far for Iowa today. And it's Jasper and Hughes, the wide receivers. Hartley looked pretty sharp. He had to scramble and buy some time. And he gives it off here to Montgomery. It's going to be short of the first down. Got to the 28. And that's about all. Dan Watkins, a junior out of Chicago, in on the tackle, number 41. Defense coordinator for Iowa State, Robin Ross, told me before the football game that he'd be very up upset if his team didn't stop the running game for Iowa. He has eight seniors on this football team. They're experienced, they're stronger, and he feels he has a good shot with these people to at least control that running game for the Hawkeyes. We're down near a minute remaining in the first quarter, and Iowa didn't have enough time to get the play called, and Hartley will take a timeout. So we have a chance to talk it over with Hayden Fry on the sideline. With 110 remaining in the third quarter, uh, first quarter, a timeout. Gives us a chance to remind you to be sure to uh, join Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, and tomorrow morning for TV's most comprehensive pregame show, NFL Game Day. They'll have all the previews and features to set up your NFL Sunday. And then at 7 tomorrow night, the crew returns for the most complete NFL wrap-up and highlight show. Join us for Sunday Night Baseball this week from the Gateway City as the Cubs take on the St. Louis Cardinals. That's 8 o'clock tomorrow night right here on ESPN. 1-10 left first quarter in Iowa City with Gary Danielson and Charlene Hawks. I'm Brad Nessler. The Hawkeyes lead the Cyclones 7-0. And let's go to Tim Brando. Tim. Kentucky making a move on Florida. Watches Ryan Hockman. Finds Kurt Johnson. 49 yards in Bill Curry's team. Making a run. And Kentucky is adding to that as they're in shape again for a score. Third and a yard, Iowa. Great play fake by Hartley. Dana Hughes. Touchdown. His 18th career scoring reception. 28 yards, and it is 13 to nothing. 
Well, it wasn't really a trick play on the reverse or anything, but they did catch him off guard. Third and inches, the old Bart Starr play up the middle, and Hughes had one-on-one -on -one coverage, and they just can't cover this football player. Andy Kreider for the point after. And it's good. Danon Hughes with reason to strut. He's had quite a start to this college football season and quite a start to this ball game. Five catches, 100 yards, and a touchdown. A little outside move, just put a lot of air under the football. When you have a guy like that, you just drift under the ball, catches it in his hand so smoothly, makes the quarterback look good, an easy six points. That man is becoming a real pressure point in this offense for Iowa. People have to stop him, and that kind of throws your whole defense out of whack because you know every play you have to be aware. Dane and Hughes, there you see him. He's trying to practice his high <laughs> stance a little bit right there. Hey, you got a lot of work yet to do that, Dan. <laughs> Five catches today, one for a touchdown, and that one capped a 61-yard drive in just 36 seconds for the Iowa Hawkeyes, who have a two-touchdown lead now over the Cyclones. Romano to kick, and Brooks and not back deep, left and right for Iowa State. Just what Iowa State was hoping to avoid was getting down a couple of scores early to this Iowa team. Brooks from the three. And only to the 18 before he is swarmed under. So the triple option, which has sputtered so far, has really got its work cut out for it now. Down 14 to nothing with less than a minute to play first quarter. What a great idea right here on this play by Hayden Fry. He comes across at Dana Hughes, runs out here. Now watch the patience on the post right here. That's really what does it at the end of the play. Hughes comes across. Nice play action fake. Now watch him take it outside just before. Just sells it. That last part of the play, that's what really creates the space and the easy throw and a beautiful throw from Hartley. That looks like his home run swing, doesn't it? I think so. <laughs> Iowa State, not much in total yardage so far. And again, they go to the fullback, Artis Garris, and not much inside. And as Gary said, if they don't get that working, it's going to be a long day. Absolutely. They, they're going to try to spread it out and run option. They're going to try to run a tight and run option. But the number one play that this football team has to be successful at is setting up that option football. It'll be a long day for Bob Utter and that man right there if they can't get it going. Pickup of three, second down and seven. Cyclones from their own 23-yard line. And again, it is Garris. And the line of scrimmage is about all he got out of that. Jason Dumont, a senior out of Wellman, Iowa, in on the tackle. Nice play by Dumont because it really was an arm tackle. The play was there that time, and the fullback needs to run through a couple of those. A timeout with 14 seconds left in the first quarter. No, he wasn't. <laughs> Hayden Fry talking it over with Mike Daly, one of his starting linebackers. You're right. You're right. And it'll be a third down situation coming up for Iowa State. Don't forget, coming up, more football on ESPN. Tonight, we'll start things off with the Residence in College scoreboard at 7 o'clock Eastern time and to be followed by a big battle in the ACC. Florida State, their first season in the Atlantic Coast Conference, taking on a perennial power from that conference, the Clemson Tigers in Death Valley, number five against number 15. That's tonight, 7.30, right here on ESPN. Kinnick Stadium is packed right up to the top of that press box area. <laughs> Trust me, there's almost 71,000 people here today. Day on a perfect afternoon for football. Perfect for all except the Iowa State team and their fans. Third down and six, and they trail 14 to nothing. They keep it on the ground and only got about two yards to the 26-yard line. Garris again with the carry.
And a timeout for Iowa. They want the win, Gary, I That's think, before exactly the end of the quarter. That's what he's doing, playing field position win. I don't know. They seem to be punting pretty well against it so far, but it is an advantage. As we talked about throwing the ball 10 yards, punting it would probably be even more than that. Schnorr's done a good job punting so far. This time he stands at his own 12-yard line, and Harold Jasper, who had a 27-yard return the last time he touched it, back deep for the Hawkeyes. Talk about a chess game. Hayden Fry playing Weatherman. <laughs> yeah, he, chess game, but he's got more queens <laughs> than right now in his game. Maybe he's got all the good guys on his side. The Hawkeyes with a return set up. And it appears they're only going to bring about four men on the rush. Nobody comes in back. The snore. Hit it off the side of his foot. That one only good for 18 yards after two beautiful punts prior to that for Schnorr. And we've ended our first quarter in Iowa City with the Hawkeyes at home leading by two touchdowns. 40,000 on-road and off-road miles. I must be in and out of it 150 times a day. It's a wonder the doors don't fall off. Only trouble was when the pig charged and caved in my door. I only use AC Delco. Cheaper parts can cost you a powerful lot. Of course, so can pigs. AC Delco parts. It's like buying time. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Charlene Hawks in Iowa City, where the hometown Hawkeyes have a two-touchdown lead as we are set to start the second quarter. Iowa State so far unable to stop the Iowa offense, and now they face them in their own territory to open this drive at the 44-yard line after the shank punt. Penalty markers down before the snap. And a false start against Iowa will back Illegal them up procedure. five. Offense, five yards, would be first down. Yeah, the way the Hawkeyes are going right now, that's just a bigger running start for them to go. You know, they just, they're chewing up yards. State has to get back to basics. They are just making too many mental mistakes. It's too tough to play even when you're making all the right plays. They got to get in the right spot. And when you're on the short end of the field position, it doesn't help. Hartley on the option keeps and lost about a yard. Malcolm Goodwin and Matt Nitsche helped to bring down the Iowa quarterback. Goodwin, the senior out of Ames, Iowa, and he is a good one. Goodwin is really sideline to sideline, the man who has to make the plays. That front line, you see, as Scott Davis tries to get to Goodwin, Goodwin just runs around him and comes up and makes the tackle. That's exactly what they're trying to do. It's very similar to the stunt 4-3 defense that Michigan State runs. Free up that middle linebacker, he has to make the play. Second and 16 at midfield for the Hawkeyes. Lampkin got about five to the 45. Troy Peterson, a defensive tackle in on the stop, number 70. Well, this becomes a huge play right now. We, we talked about self-image for the, the Cyclones, you know, 0-9 against these guys. Uh, they need to make a stop right here. If they pick up another third down conversions, conversion, this could be a long football game for them. Third and long hasn't hampered Iowa so far. In fact, their biggest plays have come on third and long, and they've got third and a dozen here at the Cyclone 46-yard line. End around. Hughes dropped the ball. I think he wanted to throw off it too, Gary, but he goes down all the way back in the 40-yard line. Dan Watkins, the defensive end, stayed home and made the play. Did he want to throw that ball to you? I, I, I don't think so. I think when he was in trouble, he just picked it up to try to buy himself some time. But it, it was just to reverse off the option. Another way to get their ball in Dane and Hughes' hands. You'll see the players right here. It's a release by the tight end. They're going to try to roll back behind him and pick some people off. But as you called it, Watkins is the guy who stays home and makes the play. Scott Fisher's punt off the side of his foot, but it does travel down to the 27-yard line. 32-yard punt with no return. And for the first time today, Iowa State's defense, thanks to that big play, able to hold the Iowa offense. They still trail, though, 14-0 with 13.06 to go in the half. State Farm presents the rules of the game. 
Today, we're talking about interference with the opportunity to catch a kick. In this play, an individual is not given a six-foot circle in which to make the catch. Is this a foul? State Farm sells life insurance. In fact, we've been there protecting hopes and dreams for families for over 60 years. And we're there for your family today with the life insurance value you're looking for. You see, the cost of State Farm life insurance is among the lowest in the industry. So, you get an outstanding value from a company with a long history of financial stability. Isn't that what you're looking for in a life insurance plan for the people who are counting on you? Love you. State Farm sells life insurance. Today, we're talking about interference with the opportunity to make a catch. In this play, no opportunity is allowed because the required six-foot circle is violated. Five-yard penalty from the spot of foul. Rules of the game has been brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. A Dodge Ram pickup with a Magnum Cummins diesel has the power to out-torque, out-pull, just flat-out work Ford and Chevy diesels, unquote. Dodge with new Magnum engines, the most powerful line of trucks anywhere. ESPN's presentation of Big Ten Football is brought to you by Dodge, a division of the Chrysler Corporation. And by the Michelob family of beers, because some days are better than others. Days don't get much better than this one. Sunny in 75. Iowa leading Iowa State with 13.06 to go in the half by two touchdowns. Utter to throw on first down and going deep and overshot his intended receiver. Dan Dostal is tight end and Utter is 0 for 3 throwing the ball, Gary. Yeah, kind of a funny call right there. You got your tight end matched up against a corner. I mean, these guys were covering three of the fastest players in the country last week and you're going to try to run a takeoff with your tight end. A little bit of a different call there. Second and 10 for Jim Walton Cyclones, their own 27 yard line. They have a three wide receiver look now in Spencer Brooks and James McMillian who's in a slot to the top of your screen. Utter throws on the run and completes his first pass of the day but only to the 32 yard line to McMillian. And it'll still bring up a third down and about five. Let's go to Tim Brando. Tim. Brad the Temple Owls have come no closer through a period of play. State needs four yards on third down, and they're 0 for 4 on their third down conversion so far. Inside give, and maybe a first down this time for Lamont Hill. He had to dive his way out to the 38-yard line, and I think he got the first. Crane in on the stop defensively for Iowa. A little counter play off the option. Daly's kind of looking at the sideline because he got held big time on that play, but... They finally broke the keys a little bit for Iowa and took it across against the grain. And that's really the key in what they have to do. Let's see if they can get that option game going. The only time they've been able to was on their opening drive and then fumbled away at the Iowa 36. That's the first time they had the ball. Now they've got a first down here to work and a little draw play. And it's Garris who gets out across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Larry Blue in on the tackle defensively for Iowa. Here's how it's gone so far. The Cyclones' deepest penetration, the 38. And Iowa, a couple of touchdowns on three possessions. Hartley has looked brilliant. Six for six, 124 yards, 100 of those yards to wide receiver Danon Hughes. And it's 14-0 Hawkeyes. Second down and two. And the pitch nets a first down. Hurtling out is James McMillian. Doug Book in on the tackle from his safety spot. So back-to-back -back first downs for the Cyclones, Gary. Maybe they got something working here. About 60% of the time, the Cyclones will run that option to the tight end side, and that's how quick the quarterback is going to have to deal that ball to get it to the outside Did one of his halfbacks. Very good ball handling by Utter, and if he can continue to keep him off balance by a little bit of rollouts, a little bit of draw, they should have success. 11 minutes to go first half. Iowa State trailing Iowa by 14. 
Here's a counter that picks up four. Lamont Hill on a quick opener got to the 46 yard line. And Hilliard, the linebacker out of Cedar Falls, Iowa, in on the tackle. Looking at Bobby Utter, uh, he was here two years ago as a freshman. He, you know, as we talk, 35 for 45 in a big game for over 235 yards. So there's going to be no awe in this guy's eyes. He threw two touchdowns and ran for one two years ago in that first collegiate start against Iowa. Second and six. Otter keeps it this time to the 41-yard line. Olin, Zach, and Wells combine on the tackle for the Hawkeyes, and it's still going to be third down and a long yard to go. In fact, more like two yards to go. You can see right here that this play is going to fake to the fullback, and he comes around and just takes it up there for positive yards. The second phase of the option, Utter with the quick fake, it just ducks it upfield. Doesn't get hit real hard, just sneaks up, gets down on the ground for a positive play. It's really, Brad, 11-on-11 11 11 football when you play that type of option football. You get the quarterback involved. Here is the quarterback, Bob Utter, the sophomore out of St. Clair Shores, Michigan. And timeout, Iowa State. A very big third down, and they'll take a break to talk it over. 9.46 to go in the half. It's 14-0 Hawkeyes. Some days you just can't lose. Wanna live, wanna spread the news. Some days you feel so good. Gotta smile, gotta knock on wood. A great day calls for a great beer. The Michelob beers. With that smooth, classic taste you don't find every day. From coast to coast, Dodge Caravan has happily served more families than any other minivan. But we've made it even better because we've come up with an all-wheel drive Dodge Caravan. So now you not only get a vehicle loaded with safety features, including the first minivan airbag, you've got one that automatically handles just about anything the weatherman can throw at it. No shifting, no levers, no sweat. The all-wheel drive Dodge Caravan, a great way to rediscover American value. whose romance with the road is rekindled with each sunrise. Beautiful mornings begin at 8. Super 8 Motels. 1-800-800-8000. The Iowa Hawkeyes by two touchdowns over the Cyclones of Iowa State. 9.46 to go in the second quarter. There's a kid who doesn't think much of uh, our coverage so far, huh? <laughs> Sticking his tongue out on third and two. <laughs> Utter long count. Yeah, they're all coming. He knows it. The give inside is not going to get him a first down. Artis Garris stacked up at the line. Well, they had to get to the line, and it, it appeared he got right to the edge of it. Wells made first contact and then got help from his friends. Big call here right now. Do you go for it? I mean, set up perfect field position again for the Hawkeyes. I really believe you got to do it. They try to hit a quick little pop play, not the option play, wrapping the tackle around, but they're just pushed back. Give credit to Crane and Nelson and Wells and Dumont. That front line for Iowa has just been too tough. They're going to punt it. Schnorr's in to punt, and... Utter is there, too. Uh, who's going to get the ball? Schnorr's back deep. Utter is up under center. It's fourth down and a yard. The snap. Schnorr will kick it away. High punt. Jasper will let it go. And Iowa State trying to cover it inside the 10, and they will. Back near the four-yard line. 37-yard punt for Schnorr. Dropped it inside the five. With eight minutes and 47 seconds to go in the half, Iowa will have it on offense when we come back. Let's go to Tim Brando. Tim. Brad, get your calculator ready for Shane Matthews already, and we're not till halftime. He has three 
touchdown passes. This one to Harrison Houston for 23 yards. He also threw a pick that led to a field goal. By the way, the ensuing kickoff fumbled by Kentucky. Gators could begin to roll now. Hey, Tim, there's nothing wrong with a pick if you throw three TDs. <laughs> it evens off. Just a little pick. <laughs> The Hawkeyes just outside their own four-yard line. And the second man through is Ryan Terry, and he's out across the 10 to the 12. Kevin Fulton, the strong safety, came up to make the stop. And you can see why the folks are excited about Ryan Terry, who played well against Miami in his first action as a Hawkeye, and he's doing it again today. Same action off the play-action pass. This time they give it counter tray. You'll see Scott Davis out in front, number 65. Terry just taking it up inside. That's his third carry for 48 yards already in this football game. Second and three. A long two as Hartley almost stumbled going back. Got it across the middle to cross his tight end who should have the first down. Hartley playing a perfect game so far uh, in this time. Uh, he wanted to go to Dane and Hughes to the outside. He knew where his tight end was, took it away from him, and just pumped it into his stomach. Not a high throw, very safe play. Plays coming in from the bench. Both Montgomery and Jasper come into the Iowa lineup. See Hartley, he's looking right. He gets stepped on a little bit. That happens a lot. Devlin steps on him, looks right, turns. He knows where his big guy is over the middle and just pops it in there. First down, Iowa with 7.45 remaining now in the first half. And a two-touchdown Hawkeye lead from the 16. Terry this time will maybe get back to the line of scrimmage if he's lucky. Todd Miller that time came off the block very well, number 67 for State, and made the play the senior. 250 pounder and you know that's really the key again that you can live with a few passes but you must stop the running game and, and as uh, I was shown the last couple of games it's tough to just pass the ball and win Todd Miller missed this game last year with a knee injury he's a medical red shirt out of Lake City Iowa a lot of kids on both teams as you might expect are Iowa natives and this time Todd got an early start, or was he drawn offside? Ferroni may have drawn him offside, the right guard for the Hawkeyes. Well, they're all fifth year seniors. Illegal procedure. Offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. A little bit of a change in the snap count that time by Hartley, and Ferroni is uh, wired with a hair trigger, and he's ready to go. <laughs> so Ferroni with a head start backs the Iowa offense up. Speaking of Iowa natives in this game, seven Iowans start for the Hawkeyes and 10 starters for the Cyclones from this state and everybody in the stadium <laughs> no doubt from this state cheering for one or the other second and 15 Terry to the 16 yard line got back to the original line of scrimmage before Malcolm Goodwin was in on another tackle let's go to Charlene Hawk Charlene Brad, Chris Ulrich for Iowa State has not played today and is not probable for, for the rest of the game because of an injury he sustained last week against Ohio U. His left shoulder, where the clavicle meets the top of the shoulder, is very tender, and they feel if it got hit, if he got hit, it would make it all the, that much worse. And it is uh, padded right now, but it looks, it looks okay for next week. He had 120 yards a week ago in the Cyclones' opening win. And that's the reason they've gone to the freshman for a good part of the game at fullback. Iowa on third and long. Hartley lays it out for his tight end who made a great catch at the 37-yard line. Alan Cross pulled that one in. Well, Hartley's not going to hear many boos today if he keeps completing every pass he throws. Nice play by Cross that time. Kevin Fulton is right on the play that time, number 36. You'll see him right here. He's just going to back up. He's got the tight end in his sights. He's got to react to the ball right now. Jump. There it is, boy. He's got a chance to do it, and it's right over his shoulder. That's a tough play for a quarterback to complete right on the sideline. They've had these gigantic plays on third and long, and Hartley now 8 for 8 for 149 yards as he got 21 more there to his tight end. First down, Hawkeyes. Now they go back to the ground, and Lampkin dropped for a loss. Coming in to make the hit, Marcus Allen, the sophomore linebacker out of Des Moines. Let's go back to the studio and Tim Brando. Tim? Brad, I've got your new look Air Buffaloes. That's right, Air Buffs. Christian Faria on the receiving end from Cordell Stewart off the rollout. 
Colorado leads Baylor by a score of seven to three. Here it's 14 nothing Hawkeyes. You see the time remaining first half 520 and a second and 12 Iowa just outside its own 35 yard line. Nice play action by Hartley and he goes deep for Jasper and he couldn't hold on at the 48 of Iowa State. Back there covering Marcus Allen got a deep drop the linebacker helped break it up along with Sean Walker. First miss of the day for Jim Hartley. <laughs> yeah, he, he just threw that one high. And that's a pass you can live with as a quarterback. You know, you're not going to throw them all perfect. But he went to the right man again. He had his receiver, and the ball just sailed on him a little bit. Remember, he's throwing into the wind right now. So he has to throw a perfect spiral. It'll sail or it'll duck on him. Plus, it was in a spot where it wasn't going to go to anybody Absolutely. except the guy he threw it to. Absolutely. Third and 12. And again, on third and long, that's when the Hawkeyes have looked the sharpest. That time he got some pressure and incomplete intended for his tight end cross. Iowa fans wanted a pass interference call on Lester Ridley and didn't get it. Good pressure that time and good coverage by Ridley. Number 67, Todd Miller, put pressure on Hartley. But he had to throw that off his back foot. You're going to see it come around the right side. Hartley backs up. Very typical for an Iowa quarterback. They love to back up. Now, here comes into your picture. You see that guy coming. He, he throws and bails out like the best of them. Scott Fisher to punt. James McMillian back for Iowa State. And he's going to have a chance at this one from the 34. Well, he got through that first wave of about four Hawkeye players and got three on the return. So Iowa State will have it on offense with 4.54 left in the first half when we come back. Fulton right now realizes with, uh, you know, 4.50 to go how important this drive is. They need to put some points on the board before halftime, and they have to stick with the basics. They start just inside their own 38-yard line. Do the Cyclones. Utter throws on the run, and nobody even near that one. The closest man would have been Sherman Williams. Tyrone Boudreau is coming with some pressure on quarterback Bob Utter, who's having a tough day so far. Well, he actually did a pretty good job there, Brad, just getting rid of that football. There was no one open on the play, and just able to get it on the grass, get some second and ten. They tried the play that they opened up the game with, a little bootleg action around the corner, and, uh, and Iowa was right there. They're playing it. Utter one for five for only six yards throwing the ball. Second and ten, Cyclones. 4.49 left in the half, and they trail by two touchdowns. Patterson in motion from the Iowa State backfield. He's going to be the recipient on that pass. And he got it out across the 45 to the 46-yard line, at least a yard short of the first down. Hartley got out there, the linebacker, John Hartley, to make the tackle. Well, I bet you haven't seen very many of those in a triple option offense where your fullback goes in motion. <laughs> that kind of takes the first option out of the triple option, but... Uh, Patterson has played some tight end for Iowa State, so he is a good receiver. I guess you're only as big as your last third down situation, but this, if Iowa State's to have any opportunity to put points up, they've got to have. Patterson, the ball carrier. It'll be close. Patterson needed to get to almost the 48. It's very frustrating for a football coach trying to call plays when you get the feeling after at about this point in the game that their X's are bigger than your O's. <laughs> and there's not much you can call in your game plan that's going to work. Uh, it is very frustrating feeling. They bring out the sticks to have a look. Our first measurement of the day. Goes in favor of the Hawkeyes by inches that much. I think he has to punt the football here, too. They just can't give the ball back to... Iowa in this field position. So Schnorr will come in again. Keep in mind that Bob Utter is one of the men on the field. He is the man that calls the snap count. And last time we expected maybe they would fake a punt. In this situation, not a good spot on the field to try it, although it's still a possibility. Yeah, they only need six inches, but uh, the way they've been moving people off the ball, it'd be a gamble. A bigger gamble than the last one would have been. Jasper is back, if indeed the Cyclones kick it. But Bob Utter is under center. And he does get it. And the ball is loose. And Iowa's got it. Tyrone Boudreaux with a fumble recovery. And that one backfires on the Cyclones. 
Well, I think he had enough yardage to pick up the first down, but somebody put their helmet right on the football and it just squirted out of there. <laughs> I'll tell you, if, it's, if there's any luck in this game, it has been bad luck for the Cyclones right now. You're exactly right, Gary. He had the first down. Had the ball not come out of there. And Jim Walden's going, uh-oh, there's 3.49 left in the half. As you see, right near the end of that play, the ball comes out. Boudreaux with the fumble recovery in Iowa. First down at the Iowa State 47. Hartley trying to throw it, and he threw it to one of his linemen. That's going to throw a flag in there. Mike Devlin, his center, was the only guy anywhere near the football. He tried to keep a hands-off policy, yeah. and it didn't work. Let's go back to Tim Brando. Tim? Joe Paterno with a throw. It in from one yard out with Wally Richardson. Missed the extra point. 13-0 Nittany Lions. Scores coming up at halftime, guys. All right, at halftime, 3.44 away, Tim, with Iowa in front by two touchdowns. Stanton Hughes has scored on a Jim Hartley pass. And early in the ball game on the opening drive for Iowa, it was Marvin Lampkin from nine yards out. That's our two scores of the day, both for the black clad Hawkeyes of Iowa. They walk off the penalty at second down at 15. And Hartley will work from the shotgun for the first time today. Lampkin in motion. Hartley, plenty of time. Wanted to go long. And then tried to come back to Jeff Adela. Incomplete. It'll be third down and long. Well, again, Iowa State must be doing a good job in the secondary, Gary, because he had plenty of time at first to throw that ball. Yeah, they tried to flood the zone to this side, and the zone just shifted over. He really had nobody to throw the ball, and he, he ducked a sack and really could have completed that scramble, but kind of threw another knuckle. When you're throwing into the wind, you must throw a good, strong spiral, or it's going to dive on you. Jim Hartley has missed on his last four pass attempts now after starting off perfect eight for eight they'll have to earn this one third down and 15 from their own 48 for the Hawkeyes Hartley got some pressure stepped up deep middle it's intercepted picked off by Matt Goodwin so brother Malcolm has made a lot of tackles and brother Matt picks up the interception You see Iowa State will be sitting in a deep zone on this time. Four deep around the board right here. They're going to make everything happen in front of them. It's a good, safe call. They're going to make Dane and Hughes come across the middle of the field. And you'll see the crossing route. And the linebackers stay deep enough that the pass is a little bit overthrown. And the safety comes, steps underneath. And it really, I don't think, was to Dane and Hughes. It was to the crossing route. And Jasper, the ball just sailed on him. Really the first bad pass. And especially when you throw an interception, it's obvious it's a bad one, but it gives Iowa State the football back and another chance with 3.28 and a half. Shovel pass to Patterson to the 42-yard line. Brett Bielema, the nose tackle, made the stop. The senior out of Prophetstown, Illinois. Jim Walden's troops with another chance here before halftime, trailing 14 to nothing. Well, they've settled down a little bit on defense now, and the real key has been putting a little pressure on Hartley on the passing game. That has changed the tempo. Sherman Williams, a slot man right there on the bottom right of your screen, one of three receivers if they decide to throw, and they don't. Straight up the middle to the 45. They keep coming back to this situation for a, a wishbone triple option type team that, that most of the good teams like to have third and two and one. They usually pick it up by ramming the ball up the middle, but State has not been able to convert these short third down plays. Jim Walden sends in the play with his wide receiver, Matt Rouse. And again, another big third down for Iowa State. Third and two, the Cyclones from their own 44 with 2.20 left first half, and they're down a couple of touchdowns. Bob Utter has a look. This time, I think they get the first down as Patterson went straight ahead. Sundiata Patterson, a senior out of Detroit, 207-pounder. And they're going to move the sticks as he got the first down by about a half yard. Have plenty of time left, two minutes to go in the half, and they're starting to move the ball effectively inside. Should open the option play outside, and they run it even out of this wide trip set. in the flat and he'll take it into Iowa territory 
John Hartley and Tyrone Boudreaux combined on the hit on Patterson. Patterson, a leading rusher for the Cyclones last year, and disciplinary action removed him from the team, but reinstated here in the fall. And uh, he's been a big part of what offense they've been able to muster today. Second and five. Utter quarterback draw. I don't think by design, but he's going to get a first down. No, you're right. It was not by design. He wanted to throw the ball out in the short flat, but it was covered. And he kept his presence, retreated a little bit more, and then saw the opening and got out of bounds. Utter looks very comfortable to me throwing the ball in the pocket. The option football has been a little bit loose for him, and you know, that'll come as the season goes. He played in just two games last year before knee and shoulder injuries put him out for the season. So a medical red shirt for Bob Utter last year, too. And when he went down, the Iowa State folks will tell you that really started to spell the story of their 3-7-1 season in 91. First and 10, the Cyclones of the Hawkeyes, 41. Utter got some pressure, came out of it, and he'll keep it. And down to the 33-yard line. Teddy Joe Faley finally made the tackle, but a nice job put on Jason Olenzak to pick up some extra yardage. Utter with a good move out in the open field. Yeah, he's giving hand signals right now. Everybody knows the next play. Good job of running a two-minute offense without staying a lot of time in the huddle. Deepest penetration of the day for the Cyclones. Utter going to loft one out and got his man. Touchdown, Chris Spencer. Three-yard scoring strike. The one thing I noticed being on the field before the game, Brad, was how big Chris Spencer was. He had the matchup he wanted. It was bump and run, and he threw a beautiful ball, and Spencer went up and got it. He's 6'4", 205. He had three catches for 35 yards and a touchdown last year against Iowa. He just got 33 on that one for a score. And the extra point is up and good. And Iowa's lead's been cut in half. 59 seconds left in the half, and the Cyclones on the board. It is 14 to 7. Well, it's one-on-one -on -one matchup on this play. You'll see it at the bottom of your screen. He's just going to take an inside move, freeze him, and the ball goes up to the outside, and a nice cut in over plate, number six for Iowa. The ball was perfectly thrown. And, Brad, the thing that's hidden in this play is how well it was thrown with the wind. It's very tough to judge this touch pass when you throw downwind like this. Most of the quarterbacks love to throw the ball against the win on that play. Spetzer, who's led Iowa State receiving the past two years, shows you why. That's the first completion to a wide receiver today by Bob Utter, and it goes for a touchdown. Let's go to Charlene Hawk. Charlene? Brad, the Cyclone spirits are high, but now they've got to head to the, no the notorious pink locker room as the first half starts to wind down. Um, down this tunnel through there leads to the visitor's locker room. Now, according to Coach Fry, he claims that it was not painted pink on purpose. It just so happens that pink was the only color available. Well, knowing that Hayden Fry was a psychology major at Baylor, I'm not sure if I buy that story. <laughs> In any case, some teams are bothered by it, but they try to cover it up. Other teams like Miami last week, not bothered one bit Brad I think you get the right curtains in there Gary don't look bad I think they could have a pastel pink uh, with curtains in there they're going to be fired up when they end back into the locker room after the half because Iowa State now 14-7 it's like they have the lead really coming back like this scoring drive 64 yards and seven plays 228 and Spencer the recipient of Bob Utter's 33 yard touchdown toss and 14 to 7 the score Heck, the Georgia Dome, the outside of the new Georgia Dome is about the same color as that locker room down there. I was preparing for the onside kick, but I would be shocked if they should threw an onside kick in game field position. They got to be happy with the 14-7 deficit. Now they back up a little bit as they did have nine men within 15 yards of the kick, and Stewart kicks it high. Dana Hughes waits at the six-yard line. He was a dangerous return man, got it back to the 23, a hit that was almost late at the end of that one. Matt Goodwin, who had the interception in on the tackle. 14-7 is our score, and Matt Goodwin doing a little bit of talking after that tackle on special teams. I guess he can talk with the interception that set up the Cyclone touchdown. 
Some other scores going on around the country. The Irish in front of Michigan by an early touchdown. SMU in North Texas, two schools where Hayden Fry coached before coming to Iowa. Lampkin to the 26, and that's about all. Does Iowa just play this safe now, Gary, in the last 40 seconds? Absolutely. Unless they bust one out until about the 35, 40 yard line, they, they're going to have to be content to go in 14 7. They can't afford a turnover. And remember, they used their timeouts playing that win game in the first quarter, so they're out of timeouts. It had paid off for them, though. They ended sure. up getting a touchdown out of it. Second and six. Jim Walden's team's got to feel pretty good about how things have gone as they spotted the Hawkeyes a 14-0 lead and have just scored to cut it to 14-7. Draw play, Lou Montgomery. Nice open field tackle. And again, it was Goodwin, the linebacker, who made the stop. Coming up at halftime, which is just a couple of seconds away. Tim Brando will bring you up to date on scores and highlights from around the country. Here in Iowa City, our first half has come to a close. The Cyclones have lost nine straight to the Hawkeyes. They trail at intermission, but the score is 14 to seven. Well, he's gonna have to punt or kick against the wind. His kicker has got it ready. And we're set for the third quarter. Kick to Dayton Hughes, and he can't be a factor when you kick it that deep. So the Hawkeyes work from their own 20-yard line. Hughes, five catches, 100 yards, and a touchdown in the first half. And really, since that first quarter, Gary, he has not been any kind of weapon for Iowa. No, they, they've been finding him on the field right now. And I think the other thing is State has done a little bit better putting pressure on Hartley. You see the win factor in this game. It's not noticeable on television, but you can see it's noticeable to the quarterbacks. Five for seven and seven for seven with the win for the two QBs. Hartley, who started out eight for eight and has missed his last five, directs the Iowa offense, and he gets it out to Lampkin, who got popped pretty good after a two-yard gain. That's one of the reasons why, if I was Jim Walden, I would have rather gone against the wind in this period because I really believe Iowa and Hayden Fry is going to try to come out and establish the run. So what they'd really be doing is burning a lot of clock with the wind uh, early in the third quarter. Now Fry gets to try the running game against the wind. If he can't establish it, he can come back in the fourth period with the wind. As you saw that statistic, when Coach Fry's got a halftime lead, he doesn't lose very often. Second down and seven. The Hawkeyes at their own 23-yard line. And a draw play to Montgomery. First down and then some. Lou Montgomery out to the 36-yard line. Give him 13. Kevin Fulton, the strong safety, made the tackle. Montgomery last year, Iowa's number two rusher. Honorable mention, all Big Ten fullback. <laughs> Guys got uh, ideas of being a Hawkeye someday. So exactly what the Hawkeyes wanted to do to open the third quarter. Uh, first down on the ground after the 36-yard line. Second man through Lampkin with a big hole. Sean Walker may have saved a touchdown at the 46-yard line, but an 18-yard run there by Scooter Lampkin. Now, that's a little different play right here. You're going to see the fake, and then the next handoff. You're going to fake to this man, and he's going to wrap around and break it out the back side. Very interesting play. The old belly series, really, is what it reminds me. Back to 1950 football, a little bit of the plays that Lee Corso used to <laughs> have when he played football down there at Florida State. Hey, he told you right before he sent it back to us that it was going to be power football with the Iowa ground game in the third and fourth quarter. So far, it's been impressive on this drive. And here's Montgomery again. Sean Walker and Shane Dunleavy combine on the hit at the 41-yard line, but Montgomery gets five more. Yeah, I really don't want to beat this into the ground, but one of the strategies we used to always use in playing, you know, football in these games is, you know a team's going to try to come out and establish the running game, let them have the wind. You, everybody in this stadium 
knew that they were going to come out and try to run the ball, and they're doing it against the wind. Second down at five. And it's Lampkin again. Same play they ran two plays ago. Short of the first down. But he got about four. Matt Nitsche, a junior linebacker out of Lincoln, Nebraska, in on the tackle. Hartleib has not thrown a pass here to start the third quarter. It has been nothing but the Iowa ground game with that fifth-year senior offensive line coming off the ball pretty well here to open the third. Third down at two. Two tight ends set for the Hawkeyes at the Cyclones 38-yard line. Damon Hughes in motion. Hartley wants to throw to him. Got it there. And a first down. As Hughes tiptoes out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Iowa's had a murderous schedule already, losing to North Carolina State and number one Miami. And after a week off, it doesn't get much easier, that's for sure, as uh, the 12th toughest schedule in the nation. And there's what's coming up. Colorado and Michigan, the next two games. Right, that's why the pressure really is beginning to mount on Iowa. They usually play a couple of easy teams, get rolling, but this year, you know, already losing to Miami, they could, if they don't win this game, look at staring 0-5 right in the face. Again, the counter to Montgomery. Tried to break a tackle of Matt Nitsche and couldn't. Nitsche's done a nice job here in this third quarter. The real change in this football game, it seems to me, has been that Iowa State has been able to stand up and stop the running game from Iowa. If they can hold on and force Hartley to continue to throw the football, they'll make some plays because they've got enough quickness up there to put some pressure on them. We talked about, at the beginning of the game, about the 0-2 Iowa start and the fact that they have not been 0-3 since the late 70s. Hayden Fry's first year as coach, but the last time they went 0-2, they also went on to play in the 1982 Peach Bowl, so they know they are capable of rebounding from a slow start. Lampkin near the 30. Troy Peterson, the defensive tackle, and Matt Nitsche, the linebacker, in on the stop. Hartleib again without with one pass completion here in this drive. He started eight for eight, including 148 yards and a touchdown before going 0 for 5 to end the second quarter. The last pass he threw was a high percentage rollout pass to Hughes. He's got third down and a long six here from the 31 yard line. Straight drop. Lofts it, intended for Montgomery, incomplete. Troy Peterson, the defensive tackle out there in coverage, gave Montgomery a little pop at the end of the play. Yeah, it is really getting testy out right there in this football game. The Cyclones have new confidence that they can move the football, they're going to score, and they have been talking to each other after every play. <laughs> It was Troy Peterson, number 70, that peels off. The ball is dropped. You can see him give him a shove right there. That's uh, really, it could have been called a penalty right there. Montgomery comes back, and I guarantee you, there's a lot of words being said there. I've heard them all. <laughs> and we won't repeat any of them. <laughs> Scott Fisher will try to pooch putt one in the corner here. Actually, he's going to lay it way up in the air and hope for his coverage, and it's just going to be a good-looking punt. It'll drop down near the 11-yard line. 20-yard punt, but it has Iowa State backed up to its own 11-yard line when we come back. I saw those lights, and even though I was only five, I knew something terrible had happened. First, I saw the cars. They were, I don't know, mangled. My father told me not to look, but I had to. I remember seeing this little boy. We made eye contact. I could see the fear in his eyes. It's something I'll never forget. No, I don't drive a Mercedes to impress my friends. One of these engines was filled with Castrol Syntec, a new synthetic oil. The rest with conventional oils. They were then drained and started without oil to prove a point. You see Syntec's unique molecular structure bonds to engine parts. Lab tests show it leaves a layer of protection far stronger than conventional oils. And if Syntec protects this well now, imagine if you leave it in. Castrol Syntec protects in ways other oils can't. 
people know State Farm sells car and homeowner's insurance, some people don't know State Farm sells life insurance, too. I'm State Farm agent Cecil Burt. Our life insurance policies, our prices, and our financial ability to deliver on our promises, plus the good neighbor service State Farm agents are famous for, have made State Farm one of the largest of all life insurance companies and an outstanding life insurance value. State Farm sells life insurance. ESPN's presentation of Big Ten football is brought to you by Castrol Syntec, the new synthetic oil that protects in ways other oils can't. And by O'Doul's from Anheuser-Busch, premium beer taste without the alcohol. Nice day for a football game as you look at the Iowa River. I took a nice jog there yesterday morning here. Iowa jogged to a 14 to nothing lead. The Cyclones late in the second quarter cut it to seven and now they got it back. Iowa State from its own 11 yard line with 10.31 to go third quarter. Draw play to Patterson and he's out near a first down. And he's a little upset he didn't break it for bigger yardage but Teddy Joe Faley the senior linebacker out of Dubuque made the tackle. What he wants to do is take one step like it's the sprint out, just wraps it and read the nose. Just find some area, move up field. Nice blocking up front. Arm Bruce, the good center, number senior, number 78, just took his nose man and just read off it. Second and a yard. The kind of situation you like to find yourself in. The true wishbone look on the triple option. First man is Patterson. He needed a yard, and he got about three. It'll be a first down for Iowa State. And let's go back to the studio and Tim Brando. Tim? An amazing story unfolding in Waco, fellas. Cordell Stewart finds Michael Westbrook, 52 yards, 16 of 16 for Stewart. That's a new Big 8 record. He is six short. 22 of 22 is the NCAA record for consecutive completion. Stay tuned. Wow. Jim Walton looking on his team down a touchdown with 9.40 left third quarter. But late in the second quarter and out here in the third, they've been much more impressive. There's the counter. And out across the 30 to the 31 yard line goes Jim Knott. And Olin Zach, the strong safety, came up to make the tackle. 60% of the plays go towards the tight end, but the counter keeps you honest back. You'll see Hartley gets take his right in the chin on this one. He's feeling the option. Here comes the tackle. Enough of a hole. He has to play outside in, but that's a big play. Good blocked by Starkby, the left tackle. Second and three. Again, the Cyclones in a bone from the 31-yard line. Second man going nowhere is Sherman Williams, swarmed under by the Iowa Hawkeye defense. Larry Blue on top of the pile. And it's going to bring up a key third down situation for the Cyclones with eight and a half to go third quarter. And as much success as Utter has had throwing the ball and scrambling on pass plays, I look for him to drop back into the pocket on this play and look, try to pick up the first down with the scramble if possible if nobody's open. Chris Spencer, who scored a touchdown on a throw from Utter. And James Brooks, the wide receivers, and Williams in a slot to the left side. They'll keep it on the ground. Jim Knott will not. Mike Daly with a stop. That's a little bit of a different call. You know that Iowa's going to be primed to try to put some pressure on the quarterback, and a little bit of counter, delayed counter like that is really not going to be able to get it. They're going to see Utter come to the outside and kind of slip it inside but there's a lot of pressure coming up field and you just can't hold those blocks long enough on this play you see the pressure broke down and that's a, a punting situation on a play where you know i gotta believe a pass was the call your blocking would have to be almost picture perfect to pull that one off right. it wasn't and now schnorr will come in and kick it away to jasper schnorr's had several good punts today one that he shanked off the side of his foot Jasper is going to have to let this one bounce in front of him. It'll be down at the 28-yard line. 43-yard kick with no return. And 7 minutes, 21 seconds remain here in the third quarter at Iowa City with a hometown Hawkeyes leading the Cyclones by 7. And Iowa has it back. 
at its own 28-yard line. Hughes, the motion man. Play action by Hartley. Whitaker's tight end to safety valve, and he got away. And across the 40 for a first down. 13-yard pickup before Kevin Fulton, the strong safety, got a hat on it. Dan Milner, number 58, was in position. They got him to throw the ball to the right guy. He wanted to go to Hughes with it, but you see Milner was the man who came back and just was going so hard at him that it was easy to just step around him. Miller, Milner's just not a happy camper right now as he goes off the field. Saw some other scores going on. Purdue leading California 17-3. Well, they were very confident going into that football game. I talked to the coaching staff. They felt confident that they could stop Russell White. First and ten, just outside the 41. And Lampkin pops through the Brava. The safety had to hold on to him at the 48-yard line. Marvin Lampkin playing like a guy who wants to keep his job because Ryan Terry, the sophomores, played very well. And the senior, Marvin Lampkin, has 68 yards and a touchdown on his 13 carries. Well, there's nothing better than to go into the Big Ten with a one-two punch at tailback. It's uh, reminiscent of Nick Bell and Tony Stewart that they had a few years ago that they ran so successfully into their Big Ten championship. At the 49-yard line, second and three. Hartley with some option of his own, and Lampkin got it across midfield, but I don't know if he got the first down. George Condit, the hit on the tackle along with Jeff Cole. Don't forget next Saturday to start your college football with college game day at 11.30 a.m. And then it's the Wolverines at home against Oklahoma State in Ann Arbor. Followed by the game Gary and I will bring you, Ohio State and Syracuse from the Carrier Dome. And then, how about this one? 11th ranked Nebraska, the number two Huskies of Washington caps off our triple header next Saturday here on ESPN. Third down and a yard at the 49 of Iowa State. And Iowa gets the first down as penalty markers fly in. Lampkin took it to the 47-yard line. Malcolm Goodwin, the man to meet him, and flags all over the place. Maybe a face mask in the end of the play. That face is going to be defense. the call. So Iowa continuing to run tough here in the third quarter, which has but six minutes left. And with the penalty, they march into the Iowa State 42-yard line. And let's go to the studio and Tim Brando. Tim? If the Terrapins can hang on against NC State, it would be a major upset. But Terry Jordan is trying to make sure that doesn't happen. Look at him wing it to Eddie Goins here for the strike. Tremendous catch. The Wolfpack lead by four. They're in the fourth with 10 minutes plus left. State did a little of that to this Iowa team in the kickoff classic three weeks ago. And with an 0-2 start, Iowa looking for his first win of the year. Iowa State already at 1-0 and, oh and trying to pull off an upset here in Iowa City. One of the things that's becoming more and more evident is that Iowa State is much improved in their run defense this year from 1991. And a little bit of a mystery that Iowa has not been able to run the ball effectively with their power game. They seem to be a finesse team this year so far. There's the rushing yardage. Relatively even. Naked bootleg by Hartley. And he got around the corner. That's some excellent running. And a flag goes in. We're going to have a personal foul at the end of that play. There absolutely is nowhere near that Iowa bench that you can have anywhere close <laughs> to a late hit because you're going to hear it from 50 guys. First foul, defense, first down. Hartley, it looked like he was bottled up at the line of scrimmage and put a nice move on to get outside as we look here. But at the end of the play, you see Hartley, who is a big football player, and it's hard to hit this guy and know when he's going to go out of bounds. But I think it was the last guy, Sean Walker, number six, that kind of put the elbow out there that they called. And I'll tell you, the real reason that one was called is because on the Hawkeye bench. Had that been on the Iowa State bench, I, I really doubt that that one would have been called. Hartley actually still had one foot in bounds, so I don't know if it was the lateness as much as the location, and, Gary and, said. And the elbow a little bit. And the bit. elbow, right. They walk it inside the 15 of Iowa State. The Hawkeyes trying to take command here with five minutes and five seconds left, third quarter. First and ten at the Cyclone 14-yard line. Hartley, draw play, Montgomery. And he loses a yard. Nice open field tackle by Goodwin. 
And he's made a lot of them today. Absolutely, and he has to make the plays. A lot of guys are giving up their body so the middle linebacker can make the play, and Goodwin, running tackle to tackle, is going to make the play. Goodwin's number 40. Center your screen right here. He's going to read the action real quick, slide off to it, and fill the hole. He gets up there quick, so there's not a lot of room to cut off. That's what the linebacker has to do is fill up there, not just stay in back and make the tackle. Second on Iowa State's team in tackles last week with 14. And he's going to have that kind of day here again, it appears. Second and 11. Here's a counter. Montgomery broke one tackle, then goes down under a wave back at the 10-yard line. Mark Dubrava helps on the stop. Well, this would be a huge play for Iowa State right now if they could stop this drive and force Iowa into a field goal situation. This is the type of situation in the past where you've seen ball go to Dane and Hughes, and that's always a good guy to dial up on this type of a play. Ninth play of the Iowa drive, and the Hawkeyes have a third and five at the Cyclone 10-yard line. There's Hughes to the right side, Jasper to the left. Hartley, quarterback draw. Not the way you draw it up. A loss of about three. And Iowa State has indeed held, and Goodwin again helped on the tackle. So exactly what Gary mentioned, forcing a field goal would be um, a victory of sorts for the Cyclone defense. You see Iowa State, they're back there in a soft zone. You're going to see the quarterback draw. They just drop back. And it's the penetration inside that causes Hartley to try to force it outside. And then you just got too many men facing the quarterback for him to get at and break down for a first down. Iowa has two kickers. Andy Kreider is the guy that tries anything inside of 40 yards. This will be a 30-yard attempt. It's a fake. Burmeister throws. Incomplete. His tight end had a hand on it. And Iowa comes up empty. Fake field goal attempt. Paul Burmeister, a backup quarterback, trying to go to the tight end, Gary. You can see it. Burmeister, the backup quarterback, when he rolls out, played safe by Iowa State again. Good coverage to the outside. And you'll see a little bit of a push-off by the tight end right there. He got away with one. The ball was just outside of his reach. And Iowa State holds a big hold for them in this uh, situation for them to come back only seven points down. They either anticipated that or they really hustled to get back in coverage because they had it read pretty well. Well, one thing all the coaches, uh, Coach Walden told us yesterday, you have to be aware of every trick play possible when you play Hayden Fry. He's not afraid about pulling the trigger. Hayden Fry talking to his quarterback, Jim Hartley. Iowa State works from its own 13-yard line, down 14-7 to the Hawkeyes. Patterson in motion. Utter comes back to his safety valve, incomplete. It'll be second and 10. Let's go to Tim Brando. Tim? Shane Matthews beginning to roll now at Florida Field. He'll look for Willie Jackson this time. And the Gators lead by 15 against the Wildcats of Kentucky. It's now 28 to 13 in the third. Here it's 14-7 Hawkeyes, 242 to go in the third. Second and 10. Draw play inside. Patterson maybe got a yard. That's about it. Jeff Nelson, the senior defensive tackle, number 93. In on the stop. Nelson's had a good game. 6'5", 275. Fans all of a sudden come to life. The majority of the crowd clad in old gold and black, as you might guess. Third and eight. Utter in trouble. Down he goes. It's Larry Blue.
you can recall the last third down play they ran the counter this time they land up fake the counter and tried to get utter outside larry blue does a good job of reading this play playing off his blocker and getting just enough of utter to throw him off balance and make the big sack and now schnorr will have to punt from his own end zone and the hawkeyes should get great field position out of this jasper's back near midfield not the greatest of punts but Jasper's going to have to let it roll. And so a punt that was not that pretty goes all the way to the 40-yard line. It turns out to be all right. 51-yard kick for Schnorr. Iowa on offense. When we come back, they're still up by a touchdown. Wears. Open your mouth wide and smile because the friendly people at Pessilar Hazelton want to give you something to smile about. We are presently seeking people who wear full or partial dentures to evaluate such things as denture adhesives, stain removal products, and more. If you qualify and complete any one of our studies, you could earn easy money just for participating in your spare time. Just pick up the phone and dial 686-7440. That's 686-7440 now. Pessilar Hazelton, quality people evaluating quality products. In South Florida, keeping your lawn and ornamentals healthy and beautiful can be a difficult task when trying to do it yourself. A call to Palm Beach Exterminating means you've found an experienced team of lawn care professionals. Our knowledge of the problems inherent to our tropical environment ensures you'll enjoy lush green lawn and disease-resistant hedges, shrubs, trees, and flowers. Plus, we strive for a safer environment. Palm Beach Exterminating. Call the best. It's a Big East feast when a hungry Rutgers squad gets put to the test against high-powered Pitt. Thursday night, live college football on ESPN in a class by itself. Coach, that was our secret play and they're killing us. It's like they got ESP. Nope, they've got ESPN. See why NFL Game Day is the show the pros watch Sundays at noon Eastern. 109 left third quarter in Iowa City. Kinnick Stadium is packed 70,397, which matches last week's crowd to the person as the largest crowd in the stadium's history. Last week it was for Miami, today for Iowa State. First and 10, Hawkeyes over the middle. Well, that's a dangerous pass. The tight end cross got his hand on it, and then Dan Milner got a crosshair on him and let him have it. Let's go to Charlene Hawk. Charlene? Brad, down here on the sidelines trying to blend in is the governor of the state of Iowa, Governor Branstead. Now, be because of logistics, we pulled you down on the sidelines, but you were smack dab in the middle of the crowd. Is right. this, this a good way to get in touch with the people of Iowa? Oh, it's a great way. We have a lot of great fans, and we're very proud to have both the Big Ten and the Big Eight team here in the state of Iowa. And this is a great rivalry. We've got a, a full packed house for this today. Now, you are an, a graduate of Iowa in this right. political year. How do you stay non-political, or well, do you? I'm also a farmer, and Iowa State is our agriculture university. So I support both schools. Very proud of our university system in Iowa. And uh, this is a chance for us to showcase some of the talent we have in the Hawkeye State. But you are a Hawkeye, huh? Well, I'm a graduate of the University of Iowa, but I'm also a strong supporter of Iowa State, and, we, and we're doing some great things there in uh, agriculture and biotechnology, so I support both schools and the University of Northern Iowa, of course. That sounds diplomatic <laughs> to me, <laughs> Brad. It's not like I have to get into the governor's wardrobe, but if I'm him, I get a tie that's gold, black, and red, and I wear that baby every year for this game. First down is Hartley on the option kept to the 47-yard line. And now Montgomery, the fullback, got through to the 43-yard line. It's Ryan Terry, not Montgomery. Yeah, it's that same belly action that they popped earlier in the game. Now it was run to the right that time. They've had a little bit of success with that play. And, you know, Hayden Fry is like any good coach. If he finds a weakness, he's just going to keep stabbing you there until you adjust. 16 and the clock winding down. We may or may not get another playoff before the end of the third quarter. Jim Walton hoping his troops can find a way in the next 15 minutes to come up with a tie or an upset win. But at the end of three, it's the Hawkeyes that still hold the cards. They've got seven more than the Cyclones. Hey, Al. Set to start the fourth quarter, 14-7. The Hawkeyes lead the Cyclones. 
Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Charlene Hawks with you in Iowa City. Where the Hawkeyes start the fourth and final quarter with a second and six. In Iowa State territory, and Ryan Terry breaks into the secondary. All the way to the 25-yard line. Mark Dubrava and Kevin Fulton, the safeties, had to combine to bring him down, but he got 18 yards. We're going to see sophomore number 67, Fritz Fruqua, come around and make the key block on this play. Pulling around, Terry's going to come in, hit the hole like that. Hit the counter tray play. Boom, fits it in, Terry sets it up, and he's around in through the end. Nice job by Ryan Terry, running through an arm tackle. Terry's got 75 yards and only eight carries. He'll take it again. And Terry he's got about four more, line. maybe five before Malcolm Goodwin can make yet another tackle for Iowa State. Let's go back to Tim Brando. East Carolina trying to get it done against Virginia Tech. Michael Anderson with a 17-yard pass to Peter Zolpe. They go for two and fail. Over six minutes remaining, 24-22 Virginia Tech. Just over 14 minutes left in this one. A second and six. The Hawkeyes at the Iowa State 20-yard line. The ground game has been impressive. The last quarter and some change. And the ball came loose at the end of that one, and Iowa State's covered it. Dan Milner on top of the ball as Lampkin going down, coughed it up. There was a whole host of guys that made the tackle, but I think it's the middle linebacker that is going to make the play that you should track Goodwin. You'll see Terry come around, gets hit. It is good when gets up off the line, and boy, I'll tell you, it looked like he was down on his back that time when that popped out. The ball came clean, and I don't think there's any doubt that the ground caused that fumble. How about how about the play by Goodwin to play off a block and come back and even be part of it? Absolutely. Got knocked down and got back up and made a big hit. Look at you see Hayden holding it in the wrong hand, right? Iowa State takes over. With 13.47 left, down a touchdown. On the option. They finally pitched to the trail man, which is something they have not been doing much of. And that was James McMillian. Well, there's a lot of techniques that Utter, uh, Utter is going to see when he plays in this game playing option football, but not much better than Luther Blue that time. Larry Blue, excuse me, made the play on that time. He came crashing in and forced a quick pitch, and they were very lucky to get that ball out. They only got about a yard out of it. Second in the long eight. Three receivers set this time for Bob Utter. Again, he's going to against the wind, but it doesn't matter when you give to your fullback, and he does that for you. Patterson out across the 30 to the 32. Give him a dozen. And a first down before Mike Daly can make the stop. Here's how this one's gone. Iowa on the board first in their opening possession. Lampkin capped off a 68-yard drive. Then Iowa added another score when Dana Hughes took in the Jim Hartley touchdown catch. 14 to nothing. Iowa State with a couple minutes to go in the half. Went down and scored Chris Spencer from Bob Utter from 33 yards out. That's where we stand after a scoreless third quarter. And Utter dropped the ball. Does Iowa have it? They say they do. Still no signal. Well, Utter's working as hard as he can right there. You see him number 18. I think it's Crane that has the ball at the bottom of that pile, number 88, for Iowa. Very difficult to get back on the ball when you snap it. You got to go through all those legs for the quarterback, but no one's given up yet. It may change possession three times before they find it. We got a scrum at the 30. <laughs> and still no official signal. And Iowa State finally gets a signal. Now, it's just like, it's just like baseball. A tie goes to the offense on the... <laughs> Tie goes to the runner. Utter had a problem with it on the snap from center. Never handled it. And Iowa State will maintain possession <laughs> with a second down and 11. Iowa City at Kinnick Stadium where the Hawkeyes have led throughout 14 to 7 the score now with 13-13 left. Iowa at 0 and 
and two on the season looking for their first win. Iowa State one and zero oh and looking for an upset. And a timeout has been assessed to the Cyclones. <laughs> Thirteen, thirteen left in this one. Iowa State trails by a touchdown, but they've still got the ball when we come back. Hey, is that? Yeah. Big Ten football is brought to you by Energizer Batteries. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. Couldn't ask for a better day in Iowa City. The Iowa Hawkeyes still with a lead with 13-13 left, but the Cyclones have it back second and 11 at their own 31-yard line. Utter in and out of Patterson's hands. Olenzak almost had an interception. Very interesting play there. Utter sneaks inside a blue and tries to hit him just on the flat to the fullback, Patterson. And, uh, you know, with a little pitch and catch, they tried to pick up half the distance, maybe four or five yards, and, and get 35. And now third and long, and remember, against the win. It doesn't show much up on TV, but as you see the pop, he puts it right on the shoulder right there. Very dangerous. That ball pop pops up one more inch, and it could have been picked off. The only big pass play of the day netted Iowa State its only touchdown. There you see the wind and what it's doing above Kinnick Stadium. Spencer, the wide receiver to the right side. Utter looked that way and now in trouble. And down he goes at the 36. Larry Blue and Jeff Nelson corral Bob Utter and it's punting time for Iowa State. And Nelson looks like he's shaking up on the play. Fry out to look over his fallen senior tackle, Jeff Nelson. There's a lot to look over. 6'5", 275, <laughs> a senior out of Stillwater, Michigan. It'll be a fourth down situation. Looks to me like right at the end of the play, Mike Wells might have fell on him late. We're going to take another look at the end of that play. Wells is number 93. He kind of jumps on Utter. And then you're going to see coming from the backside, Wells come in and put his helmet right in his left hamstring. Thanks a lot, partner. Yeah. <laughs> He's up and apparently okay. Jeff walks off. It's a good way to get more playing time. That's right. <laughs> Josh Knorr. There's what he's done today with his six punts. And back deep is Harold Jasper for the Iowa Hawkeyes. 12.40 and the clock winding down. Jasper will field this one at the 34 on the run. Broke a couple of tackles, but still got only to about the 36-yard line. Nice coverage by Lamont Hill on the special teams to make the tackle. 12 and a half minutes left from Iowa City. The Hawkeyes still leading by a touchdown. If you want a beer that drinks easy like a light and has... Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Charlene Hawks in Iowa City at Kinnick Stadium where the Hawkeyes maintain a seven-point lead with 12 and a half minutes left in the ball game. And Iowa will have it at its own 36-yard line. See Nelson right there. The last play was his right knee that got twisted around. Hughes comes out of the Iowa backfield this time as Hartley drops to throw. Fires to the tight end cross to the 49 of Iowa State, 16 yards, first down, Hawkeyes. One of the things that you have to be aware of for Iowa State, they have hung tough since the first quarter with that defense, but they've been on the field a long time now, it seems to me. These guys are running on a lot of emotion. The game is still close, but uh, their offense has not done much. I think they've only put two first downs on the board in the second half of the game. Can't win it if you don't have it. There's a look at the total plays in the second half. And I was at it twice as much with this snap. Short gain. That's
halftime as Dan Watkins closed in on Lou Montgomery. Montgomery got a couple. Let's go to Tim Brando. Surviving a scare, NC State. Maryland's John Kaleo, time running out, looking for Richie Harris. Mike Reed knocks it away as time expires. And at Bird Stadium, Dick Sheridan gets away with the victory by only four. 14-7 here with the 11-37, and you see the clock. That's the time remaining in the ball game. Second and seven. The Hawkeyes at the Cyclones 46-yard line. Again, the Hawkeyes are with the win this quarter as Hartley drops and fires for Hughes, and he's got it. Out of bounds of the 25. 21-yard pass play, and Danon Hughes way over 100 yards receiving. Kevin Fulton knocked him out of bounds. Well, sometimes even double coverage can't stop a great player. Danon Hughes comes in, bends off, runs it off to Fulton, the strong safety, and he's wide open with a nice throw right here. You see him come inside, sets him up nicely, then bust it out to the sideline, and he with help and double coverage, a well-run route and a well-thrown ball will defeat it. I think that's the same exact pattern that Hughes caught his first pass on today. And right. the 6'2 senior has got another big chunk of yardage. There's his number, 7, 124, and the touchdown. And on first down, Lampkin to the 24. Jeff Cole, the linebacker, in on the tackle. I think what's coming more and more to the front of this football game is the win factor. You can see Hartley much more confidently throwing the football downwind. He has had, not had much success at all throwing against the wind. And now he just seems confident back in the in the pocket, pitching and pitching and catching to Dana Hughes. Well, this kind of wind obviously is, is the physical aspect, Gary, but is it a mental thing too sometimes? You just feel better? Sure, you just know you don't have to throw as tight a spiral, a lot more confidence. Second and eight. Hartley off play action. Yeah. Hughes just overshot him. Maybe a little too much wind behind that throw. Let's go to Charlene Hawks. Brad, here's an update on Iowa State sophomore fullback number 31, Jay Jordan. It is confirmed that he has a torn interior cruciate of the left knee. No broken bones. Uh, it appears he will be in rehab for the following season rather than out on the football field. Uh, but I was talking to him earlier, and he says that he's doing okay, he's taking as, as good as possible, and uh, opting to come out here and, and cheer on his teammates. All right. Brad? Jay, hang in there. <laughs> no, it doesn't look good, but you can always say I blew my knee against our arch rival from Iowa. From now on. Third and eight. Hawkeyes by a touchdown with 10.35 to play. Hartley by a quarterback draw, and he's got the first down. I think. I may have jumped the gun, but I think he got it by about a foot. Dan Milner finally brought him down. Let's see where they spot this one. Close enough to take a look and I don't know if he got the greatest spot in the world the idea on this football play is to spread everyone out and run the quarterback draw it's very tough to uh, account for the quarterback on that type of a play everybody's dropping in zones if you catch him in the in the wrong coverage you're gonna have a very positive play from where they spot it now it looks like maybe he's short by that much it is short of the the last busted tackle, I think, was the, made, the play that made it here for Hartley. You see him come inside from the right side of your screen. He shakes off just that last tackle and leans forward. Big, strong Hartley. But, I, you know, there's no doubt you can hear it in the background. They have to go for this play. You've got fifth-year senior offensive line, big fullback, and players just run the ball up there on them. Two tight ends, seventh play of the drive, and it's fourth and inches for Iowa. The ball game could be hinging on those inches. And Iowa State's jumped off as Hartley drew them offside, it appears. And Devlin, the center, the most excited man on the field. As they walk off a free five, Todd Miller and Troy Peterson, the two defensive Dead tackles, ball. jumped First into the neutral zone. Defense. Offside, Kyle against the cyclone. They very definitely worked the long count on him on that play. Really tried to draw him offside with a hard hut hut on the play. You see the guys, they're looking down, and boom, drew him offside, and everybody's going to get real excited about it. A free five yards and a first down Hawkeyes at the Cyclone 11-yard line. Montgomery to the 10, and that's it. About the 10-yard line. Troy Peterson. Stopped by Dan Milner. And... 
Dan Miller in on the tackle. I think it was Dan Milner. Number 58 is the guy who's going to make the play. It's going to come out. It's going to, it's going to bounce out to the outside, and Milner's going to come in here and fill and make the play. Big play is to bounce it outside. Milner comes, fills, makes the tackle, and grabs the man. Good play by Dan Milner, their leading tackler for the past two years for the Cyclones. Second and nine. The ball just outside the 10-yard line. Down at 9, 20 to play. Hughes in motion. Second man through. To the Lampkin. eight. Goes Lampkin. And Milner Stop got him again. It is not a goal-to-go -go situation. Third down and seven. And Iowa line needs to get to the one-yard line for a first down. Third down, number three seven for the Hawks. Is the guy who's going to draw some coverage as he goes out there. And really, we've already established that two people cannot cover this man, so I'd be looking for three. Third and seven, Hartleib over the middle. Jasper, touchdown! ago against Miami. He's no longer just the other receiver on the opposite Jasper side of Dan Hughes. Touchdown. touchdown, Jasper, and it's 20 to 7 Hawkeyes. Andy Kreider for the point after. And the lead's been stretched to two touchdowns. The Hawkeyes out in front, 21-7. Harold Jasper was split wide right. I said I had to look for number three. I was half right. It was 83. <laughs> Let's go to Tim Brando, Tim. Brad, a wire job in Greenville, North Carolina. Trailing against Virginia Tech with 42 seconds left. Willie Anderson's younger brother, Michael Anderson, hits Carlester Crumpler. The two-point conversion was good. They've since intercepted a pass. It looks like they'll win by three. Here are the Hawkeyes by two scores with 8.40 left in the ball game. 64-yard drive in nine plays, 3.50 the elapsed time. And Harold Jasper had said this week, you know, I'm not just the other guy. I can play too, and he's proven it again here today. He'll come from the right side of your screen across. This is a sophomore that jumped, high jumped 6'9 in high school, and he's going to reach up and grab this pass that's slightly overthrown, but he gets off the ground. What I think he does so nicely here is keeps his feet moving and gets into the end zone. Shane Walker had the, Sean Walker had the coverage, number six, and it's been a long day for Sean Walker. There's a good look at Harold Jasper. Former New York Player of the Year in high school. Don Romano has got it teed up. Jim Knott, James Brooks back deep for the Cyclones, and now they need some offense, and they need it in a hurry. And they're going against the wind in the final eight minutes and 40 seconds. You can see that kick with the wind chases Brooks four yards deep, but he won't bring it out. So on it comes to the 20-yard line. And now when you're in a triple option situation down by two touchdowns, Gary, it's almost like you'd love to have just a straight drop back quarterback. Well, this is the point when the coach goes, hey, remember our offense of last year? <laughs> Let's start throwing the ball, Bob, because you're going to have to move it down the field, and you just don't have a lot of time. You need two scorers to win, and uh, they're just not going to be able to run the fullback now. You're going to see a little different mode from Iowa, too. They're going to try to rush the passer. It has been a tough second half for Iowa State. Iowa State can't muster any, a couple of first downs in just 31 yards. And now they're forced into the kind of situation they didn't want to be in, playing catch-up down by two scores. Hunter got it complete. <laughs> Out to the 33-yard line of Spencer. Threw a little trick pitch on that one. Even hurt his hand. It, it, it was a screwball. He hardly overran it. <laughs> Spencer was able to come back and catch the football. Spencer's second catch of the day. The other one good for 33 yards and a touchdown. And he trots back out to the left side. Pass 
to Garris. Broke a tackle. And the shovel pass gets him 11 yards and a first down. John Hartley holding on for dear life. Artis Garris, the freshman out of Bellevue, Iowa, picks up another first down out at the 45-yard line. You'll see Artis Garris on this play right here. He kind of sneak into that little area and turn around, a little shovel pass, and that's the key to it. He just runs through a pa uh, tackle by Belima right there, and that's really what keys the play for some positive yardage because it was well defensed. Teddy Joe Faley is the man down for the Hawkeyes. And they're being very careful with his lower left leg. With 8-12 left in this one, with the injury, let's go to Tim Brando in our studios. Tim? All right, let's bring you up to date on some other scores. Michigan and Notre Dame, the score is tied. Tyrone Whitley most recently with a touchdown reception from Elvis Gerback that game at halftime. Purdue and Cal, this is a major story. 38-3, the Boilermakers. That'll make Gary Danielson happy. Central Michigan and Michigan State. It's uh, the Chippewas up by three, just a minute deep into the fourth quarter. Indiana taking on Miami of Ohio. That game is now at halftime. The Hoosiers, by the way, under Bill Mallory, have a five-game home winning streak, and Indiana leads it by a score of 10 to nothing. Stay tuned for the scoreboard after your game. All right, Tim, thanks. Here, 21-7. And it looks like for the second time we're going to see the cart come out, the cart stretcher, if you will, and you hate to see that already. Jay Jordan, who you saw a few minutes ago with Charlene, we know is done for the year with ligament damage in his left knee for the Cyclones. And now Teddy Joe Faley, as they worked on his lower left leg. You can see Teddy Joe Faley on this play right here. Keep your eye on him. He's going to come in and try to clean up on the tackle. And what usually happens is one of your own guys, and that's exactly what happened on this play, oh. falls on it. Not to be too gruesome here, but this is the type of sport it is. Mike Wells falls on him trying to make the tackle, and that one, again, looks very serious. Mike hustling after the play. That's the second time that he has injured one of his own teammates. The other one was Jeff Nelson, but he's all right. And this looks, of course, much more serious. 8-12 left in the ball game. It is 21-7. Hawkeyes leading the cycle. Of the Iowa Hawkeyes can help secure the future of lower left leg of Teddy Joes. Bailey a senior out of Dubuque and uh, was establishing himself as one of the leaders defensively on this club. Coming up on Thursday night, we've got more CFA primetime football for you on ESPN. Pittsburgh and Rutgers will have at it. We'll get things underway at 7.45. In nine meetings, Rutgers has never beaten Pitt. And the Scarlet Knights thinking maybe they could be bowl bound for the first time since 1978. And you'll see a lot of Alex Van Pelt putting the ball in the air for Pittsburgh in that one, too. Thursday night, 7.45, we kick it off. I don't think the fans can really understand quite like what it feels like to have an injury like this. It's not so much the pain of the of the moment. It's the fact that you've just put in about six months of hard work to get ready to play a season. You're not even into the Big Ten season. It all comes crashing down in one injury, a, a freak type injury. And you know that you've just got your work cut out for you just to get back to where you are right now. Teddy Joe, not only a good football player, two time academic all Big Ten in marketing, as you saw. And let's go to Charlene Hawks with more on injuries. Charlene? Brad, you know, it's ironic that we've seen the number of injuries that we have today because three years ago, the artificial turf here in the stadium was ripped out and replaced with grass because Hayden Fry was convinced there was some connection between artificial turf and knee injuries. And well, from the stats, it appears there was in 1988, the year before they had the grass, there were 64 injuries to 37 players for a total loss of 909 man days. Well, in 89, after the grass was put in, the number of knee injuries dropped dramatically to 20 for a total loss of only 218 days. The number of knee injuries has remained low today. Just seems to be an exception to this rule. Boy, it sure does. An exception that uh, every game could do without. And you can see the pain on the face of Teddy Joe Faley. And this is a tough 6'3", 236-pound senior who's uh, as if to say, don't even touch that lower leg. I'm, I'm afraid there is enough pain there. Sometimes it can almost go numb on you, Gary. He feels it already, whatever. Uh, there's no doubt you feel it. I, I broke my left ankle twice. Required surgery both times. You can come back from it, but it is a long road back. Let's take the short road back to our studios and Tim Brando. Tim? 
sometimes backside pressure will force a turnover. Here's some backside pressure. Marty Moore hitting Shane Matthews. The pick by Ken Johnson. And Kentucky gets back on the board. Second interception against Matthews today, but he does have the four touchdowns. It's 35-19 Gators. That in the Southeast Conference, and here in a battle of Big Ten and Big Eight, Iowa has command. Hayden Fry's team looking for its first win, and up by 14. With one of its star defensive players gone, and Iowa State with a first and 10 at its own 45-yard line. Uh, the keeper, Utter, at about three, and that's it. And it was Matt Hilliard who just came in for Teddy Joe Faley who made the tackle. And Matt Hilliard's probably going to be the guy the rest of the year, it appears, at that spot of linebacker for the Hawkeyes. Story of the game today. Iowa State, their second half penetration, the deepest, was the 48-yard line. That's their own in Iowa. A couple of turnovers. Inside the 20, Dana Hughes, a big day, 124 yards and a touchdown catch. And it's 21-7, to 7, Hawkeye. Cyclones trying to battle back. Here's that shovel pass again. This time it does nothing. Artis Garris brought down by Scott Souther and Brett Bielema. Well, one of the things that uh, that pass is not affected by the wind. There's no doubt about right. that. It's only about a two-footer. And he really ran through a tackle last time. I just think he's going to have to try to stab back in the pocket and say, come on, offensive line. You have to hold him out. you got to give me time to throw the football. We just can't keep trying to fool him. Under the seven-minute mark, working against the wind. That is not quite an indication on top of the goalpost of how strong it is in the face of Bob Utter and company. That's a better representation for you. And it's third down and six. Cyclones have to have this one. Utter had it caught. I thought it was going to be intercepted, and James McMillian brought it down for a first down. I thought Olin Zach had a pick. And there's no doubt Olin Zach touched the football, and this is the time of the game. You know, you're in the fourth quarter here, six and a half minutes to go. You have to take some chances. You see Olin Zach tipped the ball. I don't exactly know who he was throwing it to, but I do know he got a completion and a first down, and he has to put some points on the board in this drive. Lamont Hill was also in the general vicinity, but McMillian's the one that hauled it in. First down, Cyclones at the Iowa Hawkeyes 40. So the drive is still alive. First man through, broke, broke a tackle, and all the way to the 26-yard line goes Artis Garris. Finally got leveled, but he picked up 14 yards. And with Chris Ulrich out with the bad shoulder, the man that started at pullback last week. This kid's done a good job coming in to take his spot. First stage of the option, he's going to run it right off here and get the handoff. And they just hand him the ball. He get angle blocking, and boom, he's through the hole. And he has really had a good, aggressive football game running the football. Gilmore's come in with the injury to hold it. Seventh play of the drive for Iowa State. A first down at the Hawkeyes, 26. Garris again. And he got near the 21. Almost five more on the carry. Matt Hilliard and Larry Blue. In on the tackle. Well, they're finally in a situation in this football game, in this, at least the second half, that they're in position to put some points on the board and threaten. You know, if they put seven on the board here, it's going to put the pressure on the Hawkeyes to put the ball in the air and try to move for a few first downs. They know at this point, too, that they've got four downs to keep on moving. Absolutely. Five and a half minutes left. Second and six. At the 21. And again, they go with the first man, Artis Garris. Didn't get the first down. I know to uh, Cyclone fans, they're wondering why I run the fullback. When you call the triple option, you really don't have much choice. Whatever's there, you do. You just have to stay with your reads and go back to basics in this type of a drive. Just stick with your reads. If the fullback's there, give it to them. As you said, Brad, we do have two more plays here to pick up a first down if you're on offense. It is third and two, but that really doesn't matter right now. The fact that the Cyclones are down 14 does matter. Straight ahead, Garrett's first down. Near the 12-yard line. And though there are not that many Cyclone fans in Kinnick Stadium, the ones that are are starting to get involved again with 4.43 left in the ballgame. 
This is really a mash blocking right here. McLeish and Booth and they are Booth are just going to mash him back. And that's the idea on this play. Just push and push. It was a blitz. And push it through and get the first down. First and ten. There's what the drive has consumed so far. At the Iowa 13, Cyclones trying to cut into the lead again. And again, they go to the lead man. And maybe a yard for Garris. That's it. Crane that time, number 88, the nose tackle for Iowa. Did a good job of playing off the block and getting wrapped up around the fullback. Crane, a junior out of Waco, Texas. Second down, eight. Crane and Bielma both play about 50% of the time each. They can see the end zone from where they are. The Cyclones second and eight at the Hawkeye 11. Utter keeps this one and got only to the 10. And now they find themselves with a third and about seven left. Wells and Hartlieb in on the stop. Again, it's Wells defeating that block inside that really is causing the problems on the option. Number 64 defeated offensive tackle and really didn't give Otter, Utter much of a chance to pit because Lamont Hill looked like he was open, but with two guys out there, you have to keep it. Wells missed this game last year with an injury, and in the second half of the season really came on strong and ended up being honorable mention all Big Ten, and he's had that kind of game today. Third and seven. Utter throws. It's intercepted by Olenzak. The third turnover, and that one is the killer, I'm afraid, for Jim Walton Cyclones. Well, Bobby Utter this time came out and tried to hit Lamont Hill in the flat. But it appeared to me that Hill went upfield a little bit. These two receivers are going to go up and clear for Hill coming in the flat right here. But you'll see the ball is slightly overthrown. If you can stop it right there, freeze it, you're going to see Olenzak come with the coverage and then fall back for the interception. There it is. I think Hill fooled Utter on his route that time. He thought he was going to continue out there in the zone, and Olenzak was the the man most close to that pass. Because of his hitting ability, his teammates call him Jack the Ripper. And Jason Olenzak just ripped off the Cyclones of what might have been a touchdown. Cliff King carries out to the six-yard line. Three minutes left here. Let's go to Tim Brando in the studio. Brad, for a time, you'll recall the Buffaloes were rolling against Baylor in Waco, Texas, leading by as many as 30, 33 to 3. But since that time, J.J. Joe catches fire here to Melvin Bonner, 33 yards on a third and eight play. It's now a 12-point game, under four minutes left to play in Waco. Less than three to play here in Iowa City with the Hawkeyes in front by two touchdowns, and they have a second and six from their own six. And now they got a power eye backfield for Hartley, who gives it off again to King. And he is out to the 13-yard line, and I think he's going to have a first down. And another one or two of those, and the Hawkeyes will stay home happy, and the Cyclones will go home sad again to Ames. Well, that is power football at its best right that time. Cliff King coming around. He had Montgomery, he had a big guard in front of him, and he just powered it up there, and the Cyclones were overmatched. Jim Walden said this week, we are overmatched at every position, but he still felt that his team could pull off an upset here today. The closest they've been is seven points here in the second half, but now trailing by 14. Out to the 16-yard line, Paul Cuyaba. And boy, was he wrapped around that football. He had both hands and one of his kneecaps around the ball. You bet it. It's one of the reasons he's in the game, too. Let's go to Charlene. Brad, I just spoke with Iowa's head trainer, Frank Randall, and he says that senior linebacker Teddy Joffaley has injured his left ankle. They don't know to what extent. They have taken him for x-rays to rule out a fracture, and that's all we know for now, Brad. All right, we wish Teddy Joe the best. His teammates with a two-touchdown lead and less than two minutes to go. In fact, we're down to the 140 mark. And now you know that the Hawkeyes and Jim Hartley will milk that huddle and that clock for all it's worth as Iowa's rolled up some pretty impressive numbers today. 429 in total offense. 
So Yama trying to add to it here, but more importantly, he's trying to hold on to the football. He got it out near the 20. Milner in on another tackle for the Cyclones. Iowa State's got two timeouts left. Now they've got one timeout left as they've just taken one with 121 to go. With the timeout, we've got a timeout as well. 21-7, Iowa in front. At Autobahn Cars, our pledge to perfection ensures your car performs like it did the day you drove it off the showroom floor. Autobahn Cars specializes in the complete service of foreign cars. Our skilled technicians are factory trained to perform simple tune-ups and diagnostic checkups to full engine service and transmission repair. Our commitment to excellence will ensure your car's Autobahn performance and your personal satisfaction. Visit Autobahn Cars at 2880 Northwest Boca Raton Boulevard or call 394-8300 for your foreign car's special needs. Come on in to Champs with haircuts for the entire family, just $8. With kids 10 and under, only $6. Come on in to Champs, no appointment necessary, and let our stylist create for you the style, cut, and color that will have you looking your best. Haircuts are just $8 at Champs with 17 convenient locations in Palm Beach, Martin, St. Lucie, and Okeechobee counties. Now you can own the best of Sports Center on home video, featuring superstars, dramatic moments. Welcome, Hot Flyers, Steve Palermo to Arlington Stadium. Amazing plays, wacky bloopers, and everything else that makes Sports Center Sports Center. It's ESPN's best of Sports Center now on home video. This is what you call having confidence in your Hawkeyes, unless you're a Cyclone fan and you just want to head back to Ames as soon as possible. Jim Walton's Cyclones on the short end of a 21-7 margin right now with 1.21 to go. Hart lead fires out. Dana Hughes has another catch. And he'll go down again in front of the Iowa bench. Watkins got out there. Milner, rather, along with Dubrava. And Dan Milner is a tough cookie. Yeah, Senior I, making, I, I making think, a lot of friends over there. I don't think it makes any difference to Milner what the score is or how much time is left in the game. When the other team has the ball, he's going to hit somebody. And he has done it often today. Don't forget, coming up, the residents in college scoreboard. Chris Fowler will have that for you after this one. And a lot more great action coming up tonight, too. Don't forget Florida State and Clemson, big ACC battle comes your way this evening, and that should be a dandy. <laughs> Iowa State has only one timeout left, and Iowa with a first down at its own 29-yard line. Ryan Terry has had a good ball game, got only about a yard this time. Iowa State would need to somehow come up with a turnover to have any chance now. Milner again in on the tackle. I think this is pretty smart by Hayden Fry right here, giving the ball to Ryan Terry here and saying, I don't want you to fumble. It's an important part of this game. And the reason is he needs him later in the football season. Right. When that Big Ten season starts. He's rushed for 80 yards today, has had two fumbles. And now he's going to say, hold on to the ball, son, if you want to play. After giving him the lecture earlier about keeping it tucked into his elbow, he's gone right back and shown his confidence in him. Well, he confidence in him after he got under a minute. Though. Yeah, that helps, doesn't it? <laughs> And we're down to a half minute left. Cliff King this time. And Iowa State trying to rip the ball loose, and they are about ready to use their final timeout. No, they won't even use it, apparently. As the Hawkeye fans know now that their team indeed has won their first game of the year. After losses to North Carolina State and Miami, the Hawkeyes beat their interstate rivals from Ames for the 10th straight time. Tough loss for the Cyclones, but Hayden Fry's club wins it 21-7. That's going to wrap it up from Iowa City, where the Hawkeyes win it for Charlene Hawks and Gary Danielson. I'm Brad Nessler saying so long from Iowa City. Chris Fowler.